<laughs> but the problem is I don't want people to know how I'm drafting. Nobody knows if you tell if you tell people you draft talent over like projections. No, but knows we're what talking about specific players though. We've been talk, we've been li- you literally you said this player that player. I know, but you said Hunt Singletary close for you. So and you said you're not really on Cordell Patterson. Yeah, I mean, we, I mean that's you know. It's not. Yeah, but I don't want people to know my because once I get in the draft and they know it's me, they're gonna like, oh, Dale's not gonna get Patterson. You change. I'm gonna let me not even. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm saying. I like, they don't, they're not gonna know. I gotta to stay ahead of the game, bro. They're not gonna know. They're not I gotta gonna stay ahead of the game. Like they're uh, not gonna know it's you like anyway. DB. I uh, didn't know it was you. DB. Uh, what's the dude? I, I didn't know it was you. The I was like, oh yeah, that is. <laughs> I didn't That's know it was you. That's why I'm not there though. He's like, and I kept. And I was like, am I crazy? I was like, we. I was like, I was like, nah, brother. You talking about another draft? And I had to like go back and look through the thread. I was like, I oh, put okay. it out there so y'all can be prepared. Oh, wait, and then you What's that get... dude that uh, robbed that plane and they couldn't find him? DB Coleman or DB? Oh yeah, like I know what you're talking about. What's his name? DB. This man is really right. playing Madden right now. Who who are you? Are you the Browns or are you? No, no, no you the Steelers. Sure. Yeah. Can we okay, start this you, episode? I see, I see you got 14 Yeah, I'm playing the Browns though too. Well, I see you, Browns. Swear your love is ecstasy. Get high when you're next to me. I'm in the clouds. Your touch is my remedy. Lose all of my sanity I love the sound when you tell me I'm the only one Where you got me feeling makes me come undone Welcome to First and 15, the only podcast that's trying to get you paid I'm here with two-time FFPC champion AB Alongside him is my guy, Dio the Machine Guys, I want to talk about a phenomenon that we're starting to see in some of the drafts it looks like some receiver twos are going over receiver ones. Does that make sense to you? And can you give me a scenario where you would draft someone who's really second fiddle over a starting receiver? Yeah, I'm about to open up a whole can of worms here. Uh, <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> no, nah, but I think, you know, to me, this is the importance of projections. OK, I know some people don't like to do projections, but to me, this is the importance of projections mm-hmm. uh, because, yes, in certain situations, a wide receiver two based off of a certain offense that has a certain pass volume may warrant being drafted over another wide receiver one uh, from another offense that has a lower uh, past volume. So I think in certain situations, uh, it's definitely warranted. You know, I, I didn't start off the uh, draft season as a T. Higgins guy, mm-hmm. uh, but he's someone that as the wide receiver two on a team, uh, given his quarterback, and again, it may not even necessarily be a, a very, very high pass volume offense, but just sort of kind of based off of that offense, uh, somebody that I want to have uh, at least a few shares of. Uh, now, I do think as I get Later into the drafts, uh, and I start to get into some of the mid rounds. I think you can definitely take advantage. Uh, there are definitely a number of players that you know. I think the entire community is calling undervalued, underrated, but still go later than they should. Brandon Cooks is one of those guys. Mm-hmm. Like people keep saying, "Oh yeah, he's underrated, and undervalued," and and yet they still you know wait uh, longer than they should before they should be drafted them. You know, uh, I'm all you know. And there is some definitely single handedly raising Brandon Cook's ADP. I mean, everybody talks. Every, every, like, that's literally, you know, the probably poster know, child for undervalued. On, man. Like, he's had enough. <laughs> he's had but enough steam. He's, he's, I mean, there, there, there are a number of different wide receiver ones. And so, uh, but again, this is kind of where projections come in. And then you take a guy like Rashad Bateman, mm-hmm. who's the number one wide receiver. In the Baltimore offense, mm-hmm. okay, maybe not, you know, and you can obviously argue that it's Mark Andrews, but what I would tell you to, again, kind of going back and looking at projections, mm-hmm. we're all assuming that it's going to be Mark Andrews is going to get, you know, 100 plus targets, 120 plus targets. But if you go back and look at the last three years of the Baltimore Ravens, a lot has happened with that offense. Mm-hmm. And I think we're going to talk about it a little bit later, but you can see some years where Mark Andrews necessarily wasn't the highest targeted person in that offense. And then we can go back last year and look at the splits uh, where, uh, you know, Lamar was the starting quarterback and didn't target Mark Andrews as heavily as his backups did. So, you know, again, going back to the kind of wide receiver one versus wide receiver two situations, looking at a guy like Bateman, he is a wide receiver one, but he's not a wide receiver one that I may take over other wide receiver twos. Like I like a guy like T. Higgins, what we mentioned, I prefer mm. Mike Williams over him. So mm-hmm. is Mike Williams a receiver too to you though? 
See, that's, that's a question. That's, that's a question. That's a question see, for another topic, and we're not trying to raise anybody else's ADP. We're what, not trying to write what anything. The question Chris just asked is where I think it's key in this whole discussion for me personally. Because, okay, let's back up. As Abby was alluding, I'm not a projections guy whatsoever. Like, when we talk about projections, I'm, I'm talking about stat projections. Like, I literally don't look whatsoever on what people think a person's yardage or touchdowns or, or attempts or any of that stuff is going to be in the season. I mean, what uh, if you have three years, same head coach, same offensive coordinator, same quarterback, same receiving court, and we have three years of data showing that they throw 600 that, times. That's, that's, that's irrelevant that's to totally you? totally irrelevant to me. Okay. So, so again, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a projections guy, but, again, yeah. the, the question – and this question kind of comes from the discussion we were having pre-show when I was saying um, I think it's – I, I'm a little, I'm a little, kind of uh, confused in the fact that there, I see in current drafts that a lot of uh, players are drafting teams um, wide receiver twos over other teams wide receiver ones, and um, the reason I say that is because you know I think every team's wide receiver one is going to have the highest ceiling, obviously for that team as far as. You know, we're talking about a high stakes type fantasy football tournament. So you want to get the max amount of points as possible when you want to have the highest ceiling. One of those players that can give you that, you know, weak winning type performance. So when you look at a wide receiver one on any team, yeah, even if it's a bad team, even we're talking about the Lions or the or the Jaguars, you know, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if their wide receiver one had a game where they scored three touchdowns just because just that's just how the, the, the game ended up unfolding. While at the same time. Uh, I don't care how great of an offense a team has, I don't see a team's wide receiver two having a three-touchdown game. Now, it happens. I'm not going to say it's impossible like Gabriel Davis did in the playoff game, uh, but it's something that's so far and few in between, and mm -hmm. it's really hard to, to, to plan for. Now, when you mentioned uh, T. Higgins, here's where I think the discussion really should start to be had in situations like that. Yeah, as a fantasy community, first of all, fantasy community community tends to take a, a lot of um, they they tend to make a lot of assumptions in a lot of things, which I I try to avoid as much as possible. I, I hate assuming things. Matter of fact, sometimes when I look at circumstances that people make these assumptions to, I like to kind of say, hmm. I like to look deeper into it and say, hmm. What if almost devil's advocate approach? What is the opposite way of seeing this? So, um. I think what I'm trying to get to is I'm not sure we can just take these guys that we assume are the wide receiver twos and just know for sure they're the wide receiver twos. And you said T. Higgins. Mm -hmm. The thing with T. Higgins is, and I don't know the stats exactly off the top of my head, but there's a certain point in the season last year where T. Higgins and Jamar Chase were seeing um, a very similar target share. Agreed. You know? Agreed. And, and getting almost similar type, like um, – I don't want to say production because Jamar Chase was getting a touchdown, but production as far as getting the catches and, and that things can flip like that. Flop. So, yeah, so, so yeah. then when you look at that, then my question is, are we really sure? And I'm not talking talent base because sometimes this discussion is different between talent yeah. and, and, and depth chart. But are we sure Jamar Chase is the true wide receiver one? Because some people can argue T. Higgins might be their wide receiver one. And so, I, so, and so I then wouldn't the dispute question, that. I wouldn't dispute and then, that. And then, so then... Going back to, again, this topic that we're having, then I have no problem with you taking T. Higgins because almost like you're okay. saying... Okay, let me give you like another example saying, then. Let me give you another example then. Okay. In Min with the Minnesota Vikings, who's, well, the, true, who's, who's the true number okay, one? Okay, I'll get to that. I'll get to that in a second. I'll get okay. to that in a second. Okay. But, but again, I, I feel like when you take a player like T. Higgins, I, I really think what you're really saying is you're, you're, you're betting the fact that you think Higgins is actually the number one and not Chase. And everybody might not draft like that, but that's why I have no problem with taking a Higgins the way the place people are taking Higgins. The same thing can be said about the Dolphins. I think when you're taking a Tyreek or a Waddle, when you draft one, you're basically saying to the rest of the world, this is the guy I think is going to be the wide receiver one. You now, don't think they both can produce as a 1A, 1B? I think it's so rare, and you just have to have such a great season from the quarterback to have a, 1A, a true 1A and 1B. Now, you could be a, a wide receiver two and have a great season, but a 1A, 1B is almost like two wide receivers on the same team that happen to be both top 12 wide receivers. Okay. And, that, and that's very that rare. Can do that. No, I'm not. Of course. Honestly, any offense can, you know, to some extent, do it. But there's certain it, offenses but, that we have confidence that can do that. Yeah, but it's still rare. It's okay, still so rare let me ask you about the team. Minnesota Vikings. So, okay, so going about the Vikings. Well, I'm sorry, go with your question. Who's the, who's the number one wide receiver for the Minnesota Vikings? 
I believe it's Jefferson. Okay, so but you would still draft Adam Thielen, right? Yeah, but I take Thielen late. Okay. I'm not taking Thielen high. So but remember what I said. I, I think it's weird that people are drafting wide receiver twos over other teams' wide receiver okay, ones. Okay, so Adam Thielen goes typically in the late sixth, early seventh of mm -hmm. the FFPC, right? Right. Where do the New York Giants wide receivers go? So if you had to stake your claim on this is the New York Giants wide then, receiver one. But then one, with that, with the Giants, I don't know who the true wide Like, I don't think people really have okay. an idea who what the true the wide receiver one is. You, you mentioned the Jacksonville I, Jaguars. I don't, we, I, so, I don't think people really know the true uh, number one wide receiver. Okay, but if Jaguars. you had to pick, so that, that's the, that's the number to, one honestly, wide receiver. if I had to pick right now, yeah. I, I, I don't want people to think less of me, but yeah. I... <laughs> I think there's a chance it'll be Jamal uh, Agnew. Okay, so if it's Jamal mm. Agnew, yeah. Right now you are drafting him after, but but I'm not wide receiver one, but, but again, twos, and but, but what I'm saying threes. is I'm not sure about that. I, I'm not I'm not gonna go to Vegas and put my money down and say Agnew yeah. is the wide receiver but one. I'm just thing. saying if I if I was literally on the clock and somebody said pick the wide receiver one for the Jags and they yeah. listed all the options out, mm -hmm. yeah. I'd probably go Agnew. But I could, honestly, if it was Kirk, I wouldn't be surprised. If it was uh, Zay Jones, I wouldn't be surprised. Honestly, I'm, I haven't given up on Chenault. You know, y'all, you know, I love Chenault last year. So I, I think in situations like, like the Giants and the Jaguars, I think the problem there is we don't really truly know who the wide receiver one is. That was a bad so pass, by the way. Ter <laughs> terrible pass. So you're saying that essentially these ambiguous uh, receiver one situations are going after. Yeah, and, and if you hit, that can be an edge. The if you end, actually figure out who the wide receiver one and, is, like I, I was, just don't know who it is. And that's part of the process that I'm trying. Like that's part of what I'm going through right now. Those are the situations. Abby where, has a secret list that he's creating. Nah. He doesn't want to share with everybody. <laughs> he don't want to share. Me and Chris are trying to like get him to put it out there for the public, and nah, Abby's trying to keep nah, it to himself. Nah, nah, I just want to put that out there on the pad. I'm with y'all. I'm with y'all. Right. Nah, nah, team, 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 first and fifteen fans. It's, it's a process, and it's very much yeah, in beta so, mode. Right so now. anyway, so just to kind of wrap everything up. So so, and to specifically speak on certain players, like say y'all know I'm a big Allen. I don't want to say I'm a huge Allen Robinson fan this year, but yeah. I like Allen Robinson this yeah. year. And I don't. If you give me the option between Allen Robinson and T Mac, mm -hmm. because you know me and Abby were just um, we we're just watching a draft recently, and he kind of questioned because I said I would take T Mac over over A Rob, and mm -hmm. he kind of questioned why because he knew I like watching a, a draft. We were watching a draft. Let's just put it like that. Let's just put it like that. <laughs> okay. But he, he knows I like A Rob a lot, but I, but I also. <laughs> Again, situation, I see T-Mac because his team's wide receiver one. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take T-Mac personally over. Um, but do we know that he's a wide receiver none one? Of it, we don't. Again, you talk to a person that understands we don't know anything. Okay. I've always. Remember I so said for I you it's a, chaos. For, for you, it's a confidence level. If you I don't feel even confidence. Say, I don't even say it's confidence level, but if I was to choose who I think. Because at some point when you're because drafting. You, that's a you have to make a, Yeah, but at some point when you're drafting, you have to make a decision. You have yeah. to take a stance on something. Yeah. So if I'm on the clock and I'm making my choice, I'm going to take a wide receiver one more than I would take a wide receiver two. But unless... you're more confident that T-Mac is a wide receiver one versus Agnew being a wide receiver one. Because oh, if you were yeah, confident... by far. Yeah, so if yeah, you were confident in, Ag in Agnew being a wide receiver one, would you take him ahead if... of Allen Robinson? <sighs> See? See, but I won't know if Agnew... How, but if you okay. were confident, how, if we how, knew, how, but if how we could, knew today... But how could I know? Say... say I, say, I, I don't say want I no coach speak. Okay, look. Say I had Biff's, Biff's almanac. I'm not going to give you stats. I'm just going to tell you who each team's wide receiver one is. And I tell you that in 2022, the wide receiver one like for the you Jags. Like you told me it's I Agnew. Know, I know it's Agnew. I'm not going to tell you what the stats are, but it's Agnew for sure. See, do you take Agnew or do you take Allen Robinson? If I knew, see, that's the problem. If you came from the future, I'd be like, I don't believe you. Like, who are you? <laughs> oh, come like, on, like, come on, like, come who's on, coming? Man. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But yeah. if I knew, but if I knew, come on, honestly, man. I would, honestly, I would consider it. I would consider it. You would consider it. I would consider it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I would. I All would. Right. Right. If I knew though, because I also I'm confident the 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 Jaguars are gonna have a better passing game, and I feel like I like their coach. And if I knew he's the the thing about it is, okay, let's take it to Jags last year. Who was their number one wide receiver last year? Marvin Jones. Was it? Like, are you I sure mean, it was? If you had to like, pick one. Like, if, you, you, if you're guessing right now, but you don't know for sure, right? You couldn't say, I'm 100% confident it was Marvin Jones. Mm -hmm. and, and if it's a situation where Agnew was a wide receiver one like that, where if we look at the stats, yeah, he was a wide receiver one, but in reality, we didn't really see a, him as being But those the situations wide receiver one. play out all the time. This is what right, I'm saying. Right, and they do. But that's what I'm saying. For those type of situations... I'm not. I'm not really referring to those. I'm talking about the situation where we know. Like for me, I know T Mac is the the Commanders. I almost made a mistake there. Mm -hmm. I know T Mac is the. Well, 
again, I don't know, but I'm extremely confident T Mac is the wide receiver one for the Commanders. Yeah, I'm extremely confident in that. You know, so I would take T Mac over another team, and and, it, and this is honestly the same discussion I would have with somebody like DK. Like right now, Mike Williams is going higher than what I like, and. I was a Mike Williams fan last year. Remember, I talked mm -hmm. him up as one of my sleepers. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think where he's going now, and again, this might be a situation where everybody's really just betting on the fact that they think Mike Williams is the number one wide receiver there. And if that's the case, cool. Mm -hmm. Have no problem with it. I don't know but, but if you think Keenan Allen is their wide receiver one, and you're just high on Mike Williams, see, I don't see why you would take Mike Williams over a, an established see, I don't, one. I don't, one I don't agree receiver. with that because those are two completely different offenses. Okay? What's completely offenses? The Seahawks offense... And the Chargers offense are completely different. Oh, yeah. One has a better quarterback. Yeah. One passes a lot right. more. One is going to score a lot more. Right. One is going to run a lot more right. plays. And I'm not arguing against so, all any of but, that. So my so where I take Mike Williams, I'm taking Mike Williams. I think there is a chance that he could be the number one. Okay. Okay. He didn't even have to lead that team in targets. Okay. But I think there's a chance but, that he could be number one. But also, look, if you go back and look at the metrics from last year, okay. and you go back and look at it depends on how you want to define the number one. If you want to define the number one by who got the most receptions, it's probably going to be Keenan Allen. Okay. But if you want to define it on who has the most upside or who sees who has the highest A dot, who has the highest red zone targets, mm -hmm. if you want to define you know the the, the best money th money throws, money receptions, you know who, who who could potentially you know give you that game winning week? Yeah. To me, that's Mike Williams. And then but, I'm also but, seeing but, a player but in you, Keenan Allen. But you're Allen, making my point again, though. But I'm also seeing a player in Keenan Allen who I personally, you know, my two eyes is seeing on a decline. Like but, Keenan Allen's a great but you're, but you're runner, making but, my point. You think there's a chance Mike Williams is their wide receiver one? And if you think, but I'm not taking him as a wide receiver. No, no, one. I didn't say you're taking him. I'm just saying you view Mike Williams as a no, chance. No, no, that's not that's not what I'm saying. You just said that's it's a not what I'm saying. There's a possibility. Be, I'm right, still I'm drafting. But, I'm drafting him as the wide receiver two I, for I the Chargers. I understand that, but what I'm saying is you think there's a possibility he could be the wide receiver one. Even if he's not, I'm drafting but, but, but him as again, the wide receiver but again, two. But I'm Chargers. saying you, you're saying you think there's a possibility. You don't literally look at Mike Williams and say he is the wide receiver two. Like you're not you're not basically saying there's no chance he can take over. I don't look at T Mac like that either though, but I still take T Mac around the same. No, no, no. Range. I'm saying what what I'm saying is people are taking teams who like put it like this. Allen Robinson, we I would say the majority of people understand he's the wide receiver two for the Rams. Would you agree? Majority of people, yes. Yeah. Okay. So Everybody knows there's a very low chance he can overtake Cup as that team's wide receiver one. Here's a player where I don't understand you would draft him over a, a team or a player who you are pretty confident he's going to be their team's wide receiver one. That's have, what I'm saying. Have you, dra have you drafted Robinson over Brandon Cooks? Or the, the, Darnell Mooney? See, I, yeah, come okay. on now, come okay, on now. Okay, look, come I have, on now. I have drafted Cooks <laughs> over A. Rob, but that's more diversification. What about Darnell Mooney? I, yeah, remember, I put in the group chat. I'm not really yeah. confident. But about he's the a bit. team's number one, and we're confident that he's a team's number but one. But I don't know. I don't know. Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Come on now. Okay, well, look, I'll put it like this: the majority I, 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 of people like think the hype he's the on Mooney. Mooney. We got to talk about Mooney at some point. We hype. should talk about Mooney. It has nothing to do with hype. It's like, but was I don't I don't think Mooney was a wide receiver one last year. He was the wide receiver one. No, last he probably year. stats wise he probably was, but as far as being he the had wide the receiver most targets, one, targets, the most receptions, the but, most but yards. But being the wide receiver one that people viewed as the wide receiver one for the team, I don't really think it was Mooney. I, 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 okay, the way I see Mooney now is the way I see Juju when AB first left. That's how I see Mooney right now. Mm, I mean, I, w I went back and watched. I went back and watched all no, of I mean, A. Robinson's that's not a targets. Bad but, 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 and, but, and, but I'm and, not. I'm not knocking the way you view Mooney. I'm not knocking. But it. what I'm saying is the difference is is that Mooney was not someone who played off of Allen Robinson. But, but Mooney was the one who saw the first three look, targets look, and who was the one that the team trusted. But I'm not. I'm not knocking the way you view. You asked me. It's not about how. No, 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 it's about how wait, who he you was. You asked me. Who would I take, A. Rob or Mooney? So I'm saying, from my point of view, I don't see Mooney as that. I, I and I, I kind of have to see it. Like I know they're talking him up. But so who's that team's number one? I don't know. It's not Darnell Mooney. I don't know. Okay, come I on. I don't. I, again, all right. All again, right. we've all, right. all we've all gone through this before. Remember a year ago, Chanel was having all the highlights in Jags camp. I've never been a Chanel guy. Um, but it's I'm, not but, a highlight thing. But listen, Chanel has never produced listen, like that. But listen. Remember, there was a time where the Jaguars Chanel was getting all that hype and this all those is, that's highlights. That's not a good comp. But what I'm saying is, people were going into the season saying ja uh, he was going to be their wide receiver one, and y'all kind of saw how it played out. That's kind of how I say I don't know if Mooney is truly going to end up playing that role. He might, 
But I'm just not confident. I'm, I'm actually passing on Mooney. And again, y'all saw me just put that in the group chat. Yeah. I, I don't really want any of the Bears right now uh, for other reasons as well. But again, all I'm saying is if you view a player, and again, this is all each person's personal views. Mm -hmm. I'm not telling y'all to think like I do. I'm actually telling y'all to think the way y'all do. But if you view a player being a team's wide receiver two and another player being a team's wide receiver one, where you're confident in that, mm -hmm. I don't understand why you would take the wide receiver two over the wide receiver one. Is all I'm saying. Now, if you're, if you're not sure, if it's ambiguous, then obviously you look at it differently. But the same level of confidence that you have in maybe a player being a wide receiver one or a wide receiver two is the same level of confidence that I can have in an offense having more passing volume and being able to produce – Wide receiver one and wide receiver two versus another and again, offense. But, and that's like looking at the Chargers versus the Seahawks. But, but again, like I have confidence in what one but, offense but, but, is going to do I, versus the other. But again, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm not saying your process is bad. What I'm saying is the way I view it. I can't see or I, I, can't, I can't condone you viewing, like I said, a player being a wide receiver two and saying he is going to be somebody drafted over another team's wide receiver one. That's just me personally. I guess people do it. Obviously, it's dumb. Mike Williams is going super high right now. Yeah. You know, um, T. Higgins, I'm only bringing up T. Higgins because people are actually drafting him because they think he's their wide receiver too. They just, I guess, think the Bengals passing offense is going to be that great. Mm -hmm. So they think he's still going to be worth it. I can't, I can't subscribe to that. You Me know, either. I feel like it's going to be either. one or the other. Like one of them is going to fail, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, but that didn't happen last year. I'm just saying that's the way I see it. And again, I don't say this that, is what happened. I'm not saying this is what happened last year. Every year we see this, though. Every but I'm not year we saying, see this. But I'm not saying this is what happened last year, so this is what's going to happen this but year. But I'm saying every I, I'm, year I'm we see that it's a, it's, a, it's a possibility. The, the odds are the odds are that there are going to be a number of wide receiver twos that no, outproduce wide I'm receiver ones is, on other teams. The question I'm asking is, are the odds the Bengals are, are going to be able to support two top 10, 12 wide receivers? Odds. Well, we're talking strictly, strictly odds. Are the Bengals, are, is Chase and Higgins both going to end up the season the as top 12? The odds, I would say, are lower. That's all I'm saying. That's yeah. all I'm saying. But that's a very unique situation because T, T. Higgins is going very high. It's one of the few wide receiver uh, uh, but, twos that's But that's what I'm high. talking about. I think yeah. people are drafting Higgins with the mindset he is their team's wide receiver too, yeah. but they don't care. So you would, like, not, you would not draft T. Higgins in the, thir in the third round? I honestly don't have any Higgins right now. Mm. So I, if that answers your question. Yeah. You know. So when I was basically saying that I was not on T. Higgins... And then I finally got on to T. Higgins. Yeah. But remember, remember last year no, when I was okay. real high on Higgins, Higgins was going like in the sixth round. So I, I, I feel like the, the crowd wasn't aware of the type of potential he has. Yeah. And even Chase was going like in the fourth or the fifth. Now both of those guys are going in the top three rounds. You know, that's, that's rich for my blood. You know, I'm a value guy. Like even if I love a player... Yeah. I, I, I'm not just going to reach for him because everybody else is doing it. My no, I hope, think there's some... I think... I, I think and so this is where like format comes into play and format is very important mm -hmm. because the reason that I want to have some shares of T Higgins is because I think he literally has, because it's like you said, it's close enough. He has the potential to go on like a two or three game, you know, right. span where he just scores 20 to 30 points right. because that mm -hmm. was just his week. Right, right, right. So right, that's right. why, that's why I want to make sure that I have at least right. some shares. And, 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 and so like, and like, it doesn't necessarily mean that I think that like T Higgins is, going to outscore Jamar Chase. Right. But I also think there's still the potential. So it, there's that where, you know, he just, you know, maybe I'm just drafting him because I think he has, you know, because of what I think he can do for me for two to three weeks in the right. money weeks. Right. And there's also that potential that he may be one of those wide receiver twos that can, you know, that can produce in that top 12. Right. Few and, and far in between, but we've seen it happen. You're right. But again, so that point, that last point you just made, if, if I viewed it like that, I would not draft, like I wouldn't touch him at all. Yeah. If I viewed him like what that last point. But I think the point if you did make was you think there's a chance he could actually end up being the wide receiver one for that team, then I don't mind you drafting him yeah. at all. Yeah. Because then it's like you're really just taking a bet against the chase owner. And again, it depends on the format. The reason that I'm taking him over Keenan Allen is because I don't think Keenan Allen has those weeks in him anymore. I got you. As particularly over but, a two to three week now, period. Now I feel like he does not have those weeks in him. Now, let's take two specific players. I think he's good still. Mm -hmm. I think he's very good. And I think he's going to be solid. I think at the end of the year, he's probably going to end up as a top 12 wide receiver. But I think you're going to look at the game logs and be like, dang, 
you didn't really win me any weeks. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you were a solid he production, was just solid which is important. You just kept but him in. for a guy I'm taking in the top three, like I really want that guy who could potentially like win me weeks, and that's right. what I worry about with Keenan so, Allen. So mm -hmm. uh, going back to T. Higgins, when I, if I'm on the clock and because the range T. Higgins is going right now, you you probably be able to get a Pittman, right? Mm -hmm. So you just saw the other day. I took Pittman at the three hundred two over T. Higgins over Keenan well, Allen and over that's AJ the point Brown. I, was trying to make. I would take yeah. Pittman over Higgins because that's the classic cases. Because me yeah. personally, I think Higgins is going to be the wide receiver too. But y'all know how much I, I love Chase. That. And I would not argue Pittman. I would not argue. I, know, I would not I argue that Pittman. I know that we didn't want to talk news, but there is some rumblings that T. Mac might be traded to the Colts. And we we, like, we discussed this yeah. a little bit last time. And I actually yeah. want to bring this up in the pod. Let me ask y'all a question. Mm -hmm. Okay, where T. Mac is taken right now. Mm -hmm. If if he signed an extension today, mm -hmm. do you think his value would go up? I think it would go up for uh for a, no, just, for just, about a, immediately, but then I think it would just basically I think it would go right back to where it currently is, which mm -hmm. is basically fourth round. So okay, so you think he can if he if he signs an uh, extension at the minimum he'll stay where he's at, right? That's what, what you're saying. Essentially. Okay, if he didn't sign any contract and he just had to play the season out. Do you think his value will go up or or down? I think it'd be about the same. I don't okay. think I don't, okay. I don't think people question. would interpret it Last that. Last question. Difficult. If he's traded to a team, mm -hmm. do you think his value will go up or down? 100% or depends the on the team that depends he's traded on to. The team. Do you think if there's any team he can go to where his value will go down? For where is that right the now? Colts. For the Colts, yeah. Absolutely. You think if T Mac the Colts. went to the Colts, he would, his value would go down? For yeah, me, yes, because, it would. Because why that's do not a, think so? because that's not a team that I project that could support two. Because but but, but it'll change the narrative, though, then. It'll change the narrative. Then it won't be about them supporting two. Uh, it, okay, for me personally, if T-Mac is trade to the Colts, that would drop Pittman down to me. So mm. when, when I draft wide receivers in that range, mm -hmm. I'm not drafting them with the idea, okay, this is going to be a solid wide receiver, too. That's mm -hmm. not why I'm drafting them there. Mm -hmm. I'm drafting them with the idea that your floor is a wide receiver, too, but I think that you could – Potentially get to that wide receiver. Right, but one what I'm saying is, you, you think if T Mac went to the Colts, he's not going to be their team's number one wide receiver? No, no, no. Really? No, no, no. I don't. Okay, we I differ. We differ there a lot. Through. I like T Mac, but I don't necessarily think T Mac is like this amazing wide receiver. I don't view him that way. That we differ there. Because, yeah. Okay, and we differ there for a few reasons. And I don't think, and and and, and, and I like Pittman. But I don't think Pittman is this amazing wide receiver. Right, but, but, but I think we're, we're talking is strictly. By far the, we're know, talking with strictly that quarterback. who is going to be their team, the team's wide receiver one. For me personally, okay, let me not even say I have a few I reasons. I see them both kind of different. I, I see it as one specific reason. I feel well, like they both any, would have to do. I feel mm -hmm. like any team that drafts T Mac is going to. I'm sorry, that trades for T Mac mm -hmm. because I feel like if you're trading for him, you're gonna you're, you're signing him to an extension. Yeah, like because that's why he he's not reporting. Like right. he's not gonna be trading and be like, yeah, you know, I don't want my contract. He's still is gonna want that contract. So I feel like any team that trades for him is gonna sign him to a big deal, and he's gonna be their wide receiver one. And I and I 100 agree with you. And this is why I like the idea of him going to the Colts. I like I just don't see the Colts organization doing that. Right. To me, that makes no sense. Right. But but mm -hmm. this, this goes back to our previous discussion. And again, I, I this is again something that I don't think this is talked about a lot because there's always this narrative, you know. And before this is before the Hopkins and the Diggs and whatnot. There's always this narrative that okay, you know, wide receiver changes teams. We got to automatically downgrade him because there's not chemistry there. Mm -hmm. He's got to learn the offense, et cetera, et cetera. But really, what it is is there is the wide receiver that changes teams because his team did not resign him mm -hmm. and he was a free agent. And there's the wide receiver that changes teams because he was traded. And to me, those are two separate things. The wide receiver that is a free agent. That's the team telling us that we don't value as, you as much as you think you're good. Mm. Kenny Galladay, he balled out when he was with Stafford for a period of time. Mm -hmm. And then the, the Detroit Lions said, you know what? We don't think that you're worth that. The Giants did. They signed him, and he ultimately faltered. Diggs, Hopkins, those respective teams felt like we valued those wide receivers. We, we think you were worth them. it. Yeah. We think you were worth it. We're going to sign you to it. To me, those say two very separate things. I don't know, man. I look so, at those the same, honestly. I, so to, to me, I look at those exact but same to me, scenarios. to me personally, I feel like a, a a wide receiver that is traded and then signed is worth a lot more, and I value that situation even more yeah. than a player that, that that goes in free agency is signed. I, I honestly look at them as the exact same situation. But yeah, I think if you but, look historically, I think you will see that the players that are traded perform a lot better than the players that well, are signed. Well, performance is. You know, arbitrary. You know, we can look at every situation uniquely. But but going back to my T-Mac, and the point I guess I was trying to make is, I feel like no matter what happens to T-Mac whatsoever, there's nothing that can make his value go down. I feel like there's nothing. 
mm-hmm. yeah. from this point. So, so what that then is telling me is there's potential something that can happen. I don't know what it is, but there's potential that a situation can occur that will make his value go up. So I feel like drafting mm-hmm. him now, you literally get him at his floor with the potential of there being something that happens that makes his value kind of increase. That's how I see it, which is really why I like T-Mac. It. I don't really see it moving either. I mean, no, even if it doesn't move, then where you're drafting them is, it's almost like the value is holding. It's almost like the stock market. Like you're you're not losing value in your in your in your asset. Speaking of holding, man. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, let's leave that alone. I won't break up Bitcoin. (laughs) (laughs) But Uh, I want to talk about running backs next because we often talk about these running backs that are forgotten, and I think we think about you know like the JTs, the Dalvins. We've talked about the Alvin Kamars, but there are a slew of running backs that produced well uh, last year that are not going at a at a round that I think they should be going, specifically Cordero. I don't see why Cordero is going, what, back into the ninth, I think, considering how well he did last year. I know yeah. that you're not – you were the first person I heard say, hey, Cordero Patterson. Right. Like, like but why now, like – because I know that you're off of them now, so. right? But you got you got to remember, man. You can't you can't be married to your takes, and mm-hmm. situations change all the time. Not just year to year, but week to week. You know, situations change. So yeah, I was on Patterson, and I was on Patterson last year for a specific reason. Um, I tell everybody to get Patterson. You mm-hmm. know, um, one of those reasons I felt like because y'all remember last year. You know, people were talking to Mike Davis, but they really wasn't sure about him. Mm-hmm. And you know, you know, us amongst us three, we were trying to figure out who was that next running back with the Falcons mm-hmm. because we feel like there there was a um, some kind of opportunity there. And then when the season started, um, for me personally, I saw the way the Falcons used Patterson Week One, mm-hmm. and I was very promising. So that's when I literally every single team I had, I started picking up Patterson because people still weren't really sure about the situation and you kind of see what ended up happening he he kind of ended up taking the role for me personally as the lead back now and we talked about this pre-show as well now my problem with patterson is number so, so first off number one i'm not sure he he can up uh hold up as a lead back mm-hmm. you know one thing i noticed at the back end because again i had a lot of patterson so obviously i was paying attention to you know him a lot the back end of the season he kind of slowed down a lot and they actually used them a lot differently. But during the playoffs, um, yeah. The fantasy playoffs. But, during the fantasy but even playoffs, right before yeah. the fantasy playoffs. He had these few spike weeks, but there were certain weeks where, and it might have been due to, because I don't know if y'all remember, he got injured. He had a high ankle sprain. Yeah, mm-hmm. high ankle sprain, right. Mm-hmm. So it might have been due to injury, you know, but there was a situation where they just weren't giving him the same amount of carries. They weren't even using him at all in the passing game, and that was one of the biggest value boost for him he was getting all these catches Mm -hmm. even games where he wasn't getting a lot of rushing yards or touchdowns he was still getting all these catches constantly because matt ryan was just peppering him um so that kind of faded away so anyway to go back to to the current situation no more i don't think he can hold up as a main back more bateman more bateman go ahead and um (laughs) and number two um what I saw the Falcons do by bringing in all these other running backs. Now I'm not saying they're the, the greatest running backs or or you know workhorses or even somebody that have high talent, but just the fact that they brought in a lot of running backs that that I feel like they can they 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 can use and they will use, mm-hmm. uh, namely uh, Damian Williams from the was it Williams on the, no he was he, was he wasn't the on the Chiefs like, Bears okay Bears, Damian yeah. Williams was on the Bears uh, former Chiefs starting running back. Uh, Jeremy McNichols, a young guy who was promising. I want to say he came out of Boise State. Um, hasn't done much in the league, but he's done a little bit. I think he played a little bit for the Titans last year. Um, got a little bit of run, but still young, young legs. They drafted uh, Tyler Algier, Algier mm-hmm. who out of all the running backs in the draft, he's one of the running backs that got a lot of carries last year. He has the, the body type that can actually take a good workload. Now, I'm not saying that's the role he's going to play, but just the fact that he he's an option available to them. I, I'm not sure Patterson is going to get the type of workload that I saw him get last year. Um, and, and matter of fact, I wouldn't even be surprised if they start to use Patterson more as a, a wide receiver again. You know, that actually was his, his original position. He's a wide receiver. Um, now, they're still going to run him. I mean, he he produced so well last year. They can't just totally ignore that part of his game. But I wouldn't be surprised if he's coming like a hybrid role. And, you know, if he's a hybrid role – I, that's not really the type of, of running back I really am trying to depend on on my, on my fantasy team. Okay. So that's kind of how yeah, I see Yeah, but how do you so. see Mariota factoring into this, too? So, because Mariota's kind of limited. So. Yeah, but let me, let, me, so let me get on to Cordell Patterson. So 
up until literally today, before I kind of started this whole process and this deep dive, you know, uh, <laughs> and this new this analysis that I'm doing. The thing but, that you guys want to share, share with y'all, just, right, right. just yeah, don't forget that you don't want to share I was, not, I was not a Cordell Patterson person. I just kind of went along with the narrative that like, okay, last year was a fluke. Last year was out of necessity. And, you know, it's unlikely to repeat. But after today, like, I'm back on Cordell, Cordell Patterson, especially where he's going. To me, I think we are just sort of kind of going along with the idea that, okay, he's a wide receiver. He didn't hold up last year, so there's no chance that they're going to use him in the same way or little chance they're going to use him in the same way and that he just, you know, he can't, he can't withstand that many carries. And I'm looking at it very differently. Number one, there's no running back that, you know, undergoes or, or, or incurs a, a high ankle sprain and then produces at the same level. Mm -hmm. They all end up sucking. We've seen the most elite running backs – Saquon Barkley, mm -hmm. you know, and, and a number of other, you know, players, wide receivers and running backs that really struggle when they have a high ankle sprain. Mm -hmm. Their production falls off. We have right. very, very good data to support that. So I think that's where a majority of his drop off came off. Second thing is that there were plenty of running backs that were out on the open market that they could have signed. There were plenty of guys that they could have brought in. There's always guys that they could bring in to actually be a running back. I think Arthur Smith said... We have a very talented player, and we need to figure out a way to get him the ball. This, is to me, is one of those sort of kind of innovative, like, opportunities where no one else in the league is doing this, mm -hmm. let's incorporate it. And we saw that last year with Debo, and we saw it last year with Cordell Patterson. Who stole from who? Who's biting off who? Who knows? Maybe they both kind of came up at the same time. But to me, that is something that, like, has been shown and has resulted in, like, productive plays. Like positive plays, something that's been very successful. So when I look at a player like Cordell Patterson, there's a couple of reasons why I'm now back on him. One, they're holding him out at minicamp. To me, at the very least, it's a positive because he's not injured. To me, that's saying that we want to keep this guy fresh. We don't want this guy getting injured. So at the very least, to me, that's a positive. For you to take a player and hold him out of your minicamp, to me, says, says something. The second is... I'm taking the opposite stance or the opposite uh, point of view as far as who they brought in. I feel like they haven't brought anybody in. Damian Williams has been a career backup. He lost his backup role to Herbert last year. To Khalil Herbert, yeah. What do you mean he's been a career back? He, he was a he's, starter running back of the championship out of, Chiefs out of, team. Out of, out of necessity. Out of necessity. What do you mean was, necessity? I mean, he was basically a backup. He's been, he's been, they had no. He was their starter. He was their starter. He he was arguably the MVP of that Super Bowl. Uh, I mean, they gave it to Mah Mahomes. And then but his next role was as a backup. Yeah, because they drafted Clyde Edwards. Okay, Lair. so that's what they felt. That's what right, they felt. But, but but and then the next team that ended up that he ended up signing, or the very most recent team that ended up signing that he signed with, he he was he was you know basically reduced from being the primary backup to now being a third string. So I'm just I mean, talking he, about the he, most he, recent. He's definitely lost some steam. I'm just I, I saying the most that. recent. But you said career backup as if he. Like, okay, he well, most like, recently, not even a backup, a second string backup. Then they, you know, Jerry McNichols has never been anybody who's handled any significant. He's never handled any significant uh, lead role. He's been a third down back. And then you got Tyler Algier, who I think was like a fifth round pick or later. Okay. So, like, yes, could, it tell, could Tyler Algier come in and, like, see a significant amount of carries? Yes. But the thing about Cordell Patterson, why I'm high on him. I don't need him to have 200-plus carries. He didn't have 200-plus carries last year. That's not what you need for him. You just need him to be in a hybrid role, one where he's getting some carries and he's getting some receptions. Okay, because so, what that's doing is increasing the amount of touches. So, and for a guy that's going in the ninth round or, or the tenth round at times, like to me, there's value in that. But the, Okay, so first of all, the problem with when you're speaking to all these running backs they brought in and how they haven't done it before is – you could literally say the exact same thing about Patterson this time last year. That he had never been an every down running back. He had never even got a lot of carries yeah. for a team. He he is no, and he's honestly why nobody was really on him last year. He he literally yeah. came out of nowhere as being a, a, a running back threat. Yet you saw the team from honestly week one and really week two just decide that hey we can lean on this guy and give him carries. So so the argument that you know the other guys they have have never really done it. Yeah, they haven't done it, but that doesn't mean they can do but it. But guess what we have this year? We have him doing it. Right, so right. So he's actually right, done it. Right. But this is the other but, thing, but, too, but, with, with Cordell Patterson. He's done it. He, has, he fits the athletic profile. And, and for me, the thing is, 
every team is going to bring in running backs. They lost no, no, a lot no, of their I'm running not, backs. I'm not arguing. I'm not so arguing. So every team is going to bring in running I'm not backs. Arguing. Like, you're never going to just have one or two running backs on a roster. I'm every team is going to have that, four or five. I'm not arguing that they, you know, they just brought in running back. Yeah, but I, I, what I'm saying is. Me looking at Patterson again, looking at him so closely last year, I, there was a point where I realized or I felt in my mind, I don't think he can he can hold up as a as an every down running back. And he's never he literally he, never he, done he it before. Wasn't, he wasn't an every down running back last he, year. He, and you don't need him to be. He, he he was he actually was being used like an every down running back. He for was a not. Front. He was not. He was not in that. that, that the carries did not support that. No, it's not. It's not about. It's not about carries. I'm saying every down is that he was always on the field and they used him in the running game and the passing game all the time. Like he he had he was their every down running back and Mike Davis kind of kind of spelled him a little bit. Oh, see, I don't agree with that, man. I don't agree with that. When when you look at the stats and you look at the game logs, to me he was not. But but it's not about it's not about the stats. I'm talking about when you watch the game. He was out there. To me, an every down running back is somebody who's getting 15 to 20 carries and then also seeing passing down work. But that's that's not that's not what he's doing. That's not the definition I'm using. What the definition I'm using is. How they were using him? Were they using him a first down through third down, and they were using him like that? And it got to a point where you know, near the back end of the season, they stopped using him like that. Again, I, I mean, I, I watched it happen, and his his number just kind of dipped. And again, after, might, that was after the injury. It might have been due to the injury, yes, but also it, but it also, literally happened right after the. But injury. it also might have 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 let them <clears throat> because. Chris, I think you you pointed out when you dropped Mike Davis last year, that mm-hmm. next week he had a big game. Mm-hmm. Like before that, he literally wasn't being used at all. And then all of a sudden he started getting used. And in the back in the season, he was actually used a fair amount. You know? So again, my problem with Patterson is the other guys they brought in, it's they're they're a threat. You mentioned one thing about them holding them out of minicamp. I mean, you can look at that as a positive. You can look at that as a negative, or you can look at it like it's nothing. Don't forget, the guy is an old running back. The guy is in his thirties already. We're, we're not talking about a, a young. He's not. A, he's not an old running back. He's an old player, but not really well, an old okay. running back. Okay, semantics. Okay, the guy is it's not old. semantics. This is one thing. Well, when I one say, thing when being I say an he's old an running old back, running back, he age wise, he's old. That's what I'm talking about. He he's, is, but that would presume that like he's had. No, no, no. I didn't say, like, but, but yeah. I'm not. But I'm not presuming anything. Yeah. All I'm saying is he's. Old and he's a running back. He's a old running back. Uh, yeah, not, we have different definitions. We have different definitions of lead running back. We got different definitions of workhorse running back, and we have or three down running back, and we have different definitions of old. Running but how back. how are you have a, when I say a old? I'm literally talking about the age. Like mm-hmm. that's what I'm talking. I about. I don't view I, to me that's not old. To me, that's he's not in old. his 30s. If he was a 30 year old running back and played running back every day, but I'm not talking about he, he's I'm not he talking about like his usage. Wide receiver. I'm not talking about a usage. But to me, You're, that's important. To but, me, that's but, important. But, but I'm not. But but what I'm saying is, I'm not talking about usage. But why? All but I'm in the context is, of it, if if age matters in the context of in terms of how he's going to produce, and we're using age as a factor, then we have. Then but you can't, all, you can't but ignore all I'm usage. Saying, all I'm saying is he is old. He's in his 30s. Like, okay, 31. but why are you bringing that up? Why is that important? Because you, you again, you just said he's sitting out of minicamp. What I'm saying is he's an old running back, so veterans tend to sometimes get the benefit of the doubt to be able to kind of not have I to have know. all these reps. There's a lot of other veterans there. I'm not saying all of the veterans do. I'm saying veterans sometimes get the benefit of the doubt where they can actually take time off because they're vets. They've been in the league for a while. The guy has been in the league for a long time. There's so not a lot so, of those so again, all I'm saying veterans. is when you yeah. when you when you say that he's sitting out of minicamp. I can mandatory mini camp, but I can look at that so many different ways. He's not the only player that's not in mandatory. There are not a lot of vets sitting out mandatory mini camp. But what I'm saying is, there are players that sit out of mandatory mini camp, and it. Do, I can literally look at that as a positive or a negative. That's all I'm saying. If you want to look at that as a positive, that's fine. What's the negative yeah. of it? It could be a thing where they're like, he's older. He's older, number one, and number two, he might still be somebody that they like. Uh, he still is kind of nicked up a little bit. That we don't want to put, put all that pressure on him. We want to keep him fresh because we feel like if we put a, too much work on him now, he's not going to make it through that full season. Yeah, but that only the means season. that they want to keep him fresh because they have no. That's something specific yeah, for him okay, in mind. But so and, I and I have no problem with that. I have no problem with what they think they're going to be using him. They can say they want to use him as uh, every down back. But what did I say in the beginning? I don't know if he can hold up. As an every down back, yeah. We what is won. your definition of every down back? I mean, I've down said it already. Every down. Playing first through first, third down. But how often? If you you can play you can play a series. There are plenty there are plenty of uh, systems that will have a lead running back like he gets three hundred plus carries a year. But then they have the backup come in and play a series mm-hmm. one through three. Okay. So is that a lead running back? 
the guy that played that that the, plays the, a series one through three. Is that a no? Lead that's, running a, back? that's a running back that spelled the veteran. The so spelled how the starter. You, how do you define a lead running back? I, I just told you somebody's playing first through third and. First of all, a lead back running back is somebody when they start the game, he's the first running back out there. That's what I consider a lead because he's but leading. That means the, he can literally play the first play and then not play yeah, any other play. Okay, how many running game? backs? Yeah, in but the typically. That's yeah, right. thank you, Chris. How many running backs t- uh, uh, typically come out play the first series and they don't play anymore? Yeah. Usually, the lead back is somebody that's going to play that first series. He might get spelled. Every running back is spelled. I'm not arguing that. But at what all. if he's getting spelled a lot? I mean, there's running backs that get spelled a lot. I'm not having an issue. Again, we're talk- when I'm talking about a lead back, the first guy out there. Now, I when I'm talking about an every down back, I'm talking about a guy that's playing first, second, and but th- third those down. Are, those, but those, that's such a wide range. You could have a guy but, that but, has 300 plus carries, and you could have but, a guy that but, has 125 I'm not, carries. I'm not trying that's to, very I'm different. not trying to pigeonhole into this concise type circumstance. It's not about all, concise. All, all you saying, know, but you know that Cordell Patterson is not going to be somebody who's going to get 300 carries. You but know I, that for a fact. Again, I don't do carries projections. We talked about it's that. It's not already. about projections. If but, I gave you $100 I, I, right now, but you, but would, I'm not, you would place I don't, that bet. I'm, I'm not going to place any bet on the amount of carries any player is going to get. I'm not going to place that bet on anybody. So that's just not how I view things. If I told I, you I'd give you $1,000 right now, if he gets 300 carries, you wouldn't take the I, under? I, I, you I wouldn't, wouldn't take the under. <laughs> you so, would take the under, under I'm not, 300 I'm not going to make any bet on that at all. Like, Come on You now. keep trying to get me to make a bet on any kind of projection. I don't do that. Like, I'm not going to... I don't even have the mental capability to think what is a 200 carry type type scenario. Like I don't I don't think that way. You know, like I said, we're talking about different things. A lead back is one thing. Again, I, I define that somebody that starts the game out when the, the offense goes out, he's the first running back out there. A three down about a three down back. I define as somebody that's going to play first, second, and third. My problem with Cordero Patterson is I'm not saying he's not going to be the lead back. I'm not even saying he can't be an every down back. What I'm saying is I don't think he can hold up as being the every down back throughout the full season. And if that's the case, that's not a, a player I'm trying to invest in. Again, if somebody else wants to get him, so be it. I'm not even knocking that player. But me personally, the reason I was high on him last year, mm-hmm. I don't see those reasons being the case anymore, so I'm not as high on him So this why year. do you why, why do you think he could – so you last year you thought he could hold up? Yes. And this year you don't think he could hold up? Correct. Because last year, last year – because last year I saw it play out where he didn't hold up. But you could literally say that about every single running back. I mean, which running backs are we talking about? E- literally every running back. Which running back? I saw literally John, every running I saw back. Jonathan, Christian McCaffrey didn't I saw hold Jonathan up. Taylor. Saquon Barkley didn't hold up. I saw, I saw, I saw, I saw Jonathan Taylor hold up. I saw, he's, probably, he's probably the I only one. I saw Joe one. Mixon hold up. I well, saw, we see, we've seen plenty of years like where Joe, Joe Mixon, Mixon has not held up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The years before, Joe Mixon has never but, held but what, up. But, but what I'm saying, you just said, we, but I've seen him hold up. I've never seen Patterson hold up as a full season. Okay. That's all I'm saying. And remember, but you, got Patterson, almost, you got a good majority of the season. I mean, you got a good majority was, of the season. I don't season. even think it was a majority of the season, number one. And again, it was a majority of the season. You got a good I, majority I, of the season. I don't see it as up. being a majority of the season, number one. And number two, prior to last year, he had never been in lead back. So okay. we don't even have a history of showing that he can actually do it. So that again, that's just why I'm off Patterson. Okay. Again, that's I don't fair, I don't speak as far as saying you should not draft Patterson or you should not draft Patterson. I, mean, I know y'all drafted Patterson. We're not we're not we're not but but the whole discussion is why you are not. And off I and I've told you why. Okay. I've told you why. Whether okay. I mean if you don't agree with it, that's cool. I don't agree with it. That's cool. But me, when I when I view Patterson, <laughs> I don't see I mean, remember, this time last year, he was a receiver. That's how we viewed him. Mm-hmm. You know, now now the way we view him is uh, is literally a 180. Yeah. And I'm not going to just say, okay, we saw him do something last year, so I'm now going to just totally flip the way I, I view him. Again, I, I was high on him last year for a certain reason. That reason is now gone. So yeah. I, I, I can't be high on him anymore. I'm, I'm going to get some naturally. shares, especially if he's going like in the ninth, tenth round, go zero RB. I'm going to get some shares. He'll be, he does. To me, he's going to be a guy that I target. I definitely will take him over James Cook. I see James Cook going over him all the time. I'm not high on James Cook either, though. Again, so. But again, I also don't see James Cook as an every down back. Yeah. So oh, no, no, nor do I. Nor do I. I don't think anybody does. But like, what about Singletary though? Like, right now he's slated to be a starting running back, but he's going really late for starting running backs. Is he a running back that's kind of forgotten as well? So yeah. So this for me, like, I was like getting some Singletary in that seventh, you know, mm-hmm. eighth round, preferably. Now I'm gonna be kind of likely switching that up. Like mm-hmm. I feel like now I think. Cordell Patterson is probably going to be my target. And it's probably just, for me, also a way to, uh, to diversify, you know, uh, especially when you're going to go on hero RB or zero RB. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, in a vacuum right now, give me Cordell Patterson over Singletary. And this is because in terms of me kind of going through this deep dive, 
looking at the like last three years of you know Buffalo Bills stats, understanding what they brought in with uh, James Cook, even looking at vacated targets, but looking at what Devin Singletary has done with those targets in the past. Mm -hmm. You know, he's basically been a 40 to 50 target uh, uh, per year type guy. Now you bring in an actual pass catching back. And it's not that they just brought somebody in. They drafted him in the second round, and all offseason they told us we really want a pass catching back here. Mm -hmm. Like we Agreed. really want that. Like that's something that we really want. Agree. So if he's losing that aspect of his game uh, and fantasy production, and we're now relying on him as a rusher, and he may be someone who gets that you know hundred ninety, you know slightly over two hundred plus carries. Uh, He's really going to be, you know, to me, TD dependent at that point. You know, he'll mm -hmm. get some uh, receptions, but he's largely going to be TD dependent. Right. And that's something that I don't want to. So, for me, I'm going to lean on a guy who can get me something in the, you know, as far as receptions in a PPR league. Mm -hmm. And they can also score because they use Cordell Patterson uh, in the red zone. They may not use him on the goal line, per se, but they'll use him in the red zone. So, I'm going to lean more on that uh, in the receptions than I am going to lean on a guy who's, you know, now just kind of more relegated to uh, carries. But he's in a high-powered offense, so it is definitely well within the realm of possibilities that he sees uh, potentially a double-digit TD, but I think that, you know, that's asking a lot. Yeah. I mean, for me, I, so is the question Singletary or Patterson, or are you just saying no, how just, do I feel no, about Singletary? Feel about just Singletary. Oh, yeah, it was just Singletary. Singletary, so – Again, you, you made a good point bringing up, up the fact that they keep bringing all these, or they kept bringing all these receiving backs who they yeah. obviously felt like they were trying to fill some kind of role. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, for me, kind of caps Singletary's ceiling, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, so it kind of goes back to when we were talking about, you know, every down running backs. For me, that kind of makes Singletary no longer a potential every down running back. Mm -hmm. So that right there is kind of a knock. Uh, but at the same time, I do see him as the lead back, you know? And, you know, I... Obviously, you see I have different definitions, I mean, different, you know, kind of um, roles or how I kind of view all these running backs. So he's the lead black back. So when I'm looking at Singletary on the draft board and considering drafting him, I really look at how I, my, I've constructed my team already. If I'm looking for a, a guy, whether it's a flex or a starting running back, somebody mm -hmm. I'm going to kind of depend on at least week one. I would view him higher than I would view a Patterson. I mm. would actually draft him because I feel like his floor is higher than Patterson's because he's still the lead back. You know, if I'm looking for a depth piece, mm -hmm. I would take probably Patterson because I feel like Patterson might have the higher ceiling. Because, and I, I don't, I don't play fantasy with this mindset of what I think is absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. I understand I'm likely I mean there's a chance I'm wrong. Matter of fact, I understand I'm there's never a, wrong. I'm never wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I understand I'm that I'm with I'm 100 percent right. And I, 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 <laughs> I understand that there's a good chance I'm wrong. And yeah. and, and I, I embrace that. Yeah. I embrace yeah. error. And that's important. Error that's important. Pot yeah. uh, possibility. Very important. So, you know, to me, there's a chance Patterson can day one get that same role. You yeah. know, mm -hmm. maybe even do better with it now that Mike Davis is gone. Get all the catches. Get the every down back the and whole way through. He plays Thursday night. So, so, <laughs> so he plays Thursday night. You didn't know he played Thursday night. Patterson? No, no, uh, Singletary. No, no. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I thought you were talking about Patterson. Yeah. So, so there, I, I know Patterson. If Patterson does get that type of of, of type of role, he to me is going to have a higher ceiling than, than Singletary because, like I just said, Singletary to me is not going to be a three down back. You know, so when comparing the two. If I'm building a team where I need that role, and that's more of a safe build, you know, you know, that's a whole discussion as far as in these type of drafts, whether you want to be a safe build or if you want to be a, a high ceiling build. Mm -hmm. If I'm trying to do a safe build, I'm going to go single tear. But again, I understand, you know, Patterson, if I have my running backs um, slots filled up and my yeah. flex, I'll take Patterson as a depth piece because, mm -hmm. I've, you know, mm -hmm. there's a chance that, you know, he can kind of show out. Um, this is this is what excites me about Patterson as well. Kind of just you know not to kind of beat a dead horse with this, is last year Matt Ryan was basically you know he's a non-mobile quarterback, and you have Arthur Smith who kind of historically has a guy who's somewhat mobile. He you know he obviously had Tannehill, where I think worked with Mariota a little bit. I think there was a little bit of overlap there. And who did they sign and who did they draft? They drafted and signed a guy you know quarterbacks who were mobile. You know. 
that to me that's 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 somewhat significant. And you know, but I think how does that, that helps help, how does that help Patterson? I think that helps Patterson in the running game because now defenses have to take into account that the quarterback may run. Okay, I think that okay. opens yeah, but that up tells the outside me zone. that more people move into the box, which not is not where necessarily, not necessarily, not necessarily. It's like so instead of that, instead instead of the linebacker having to kind of just you know zero in and focus in on a running back on a play action pass because he knows he can probably just make up ground and, and get to that mobile quarterback if it's you know if it ends up being play action and not a run. Now you literally have to like dedicate a defender to someone who's going to have to you know. You know, guard Mariota on an RPO or on a play action. But we've seen historically running quarterbacks tend not to throw it to their running backs as much. Mm -hmm. It depends. So the th this is and this is a good thing about Cordell Patterson, and this is the thing about De DeAndre Swift that we'll talk about on a later pass. There's one thing where you know, it's one thing to dump it down to your running back because you're down two minute drill. He's like the only you know, defenses are in prevent. And you're just dumping it down. It's another thing to have design throws this is one reason why i have like you know why i'm not high on Najee, because i felt like those weren't really like designed or so you think the falcons are going to design pass plays to they designed pa they, they were designed pass plays to patterson last year they were designed okay. plays to get him the ball in space okay. both out of the backfield and routes out of the backfield i got well. you. you know you know both i mean, carry, I mean again i'm not i don't and, knock and, and i don't so. knock anybody that's drafting patterson or high on patterson by all means, yeah. I, mean, I, I wouldn't say high. I, we're not, we're I not truly saying believe, high. I'm in, just saying. especially in a high, high stakes type tournament, you you have to take a stand on something and roll with it. You know, you don't want to hedge. You you mm -hmm. want to definitely say this is what I think is going to happen and go all in, mm -hmm. because you know that's how you you kind of end up at the top of the hill. But just me personally, I, I just have just when I've just evaluate the whole situation. I'm I'm just not a Patterson guy this year. Yeah. I, and I was asking you earlier as far as whether you feel like his value is going to drop with the news that he's sitting out practice. And you say you feel like it's going to probably stay the same. Yeah. So that is obviously going to keep it a situation where I'm not going to draft much Patterson. Mm -hmm. If there's any type of dip at all, you know, I'll mm -hmm. probably jump on him just to have some kind of exposure. So late um, ninth is not... I really don't even know where his ADP is at. Is it in ninth right now? I'm thinking it's about late ninth. So, so he's being drafted as a depth piece. Like, he's not even drafted mm -hmm. as, a, as a flex. That's right. why I find him as a value. Yeah. He probably is a value there. I mean, I'm, I'm, again, he might be, but I feel like his floor could be very low, yeah. too. I see. I just think it's so – and, again, I'm not saying, like, like you said, like that it's well within the realm of possibilities that they say, you know what, we like Algier. He's performing well. We like what, what Mickles plays, uh, you know, uh, it, it, as far as the third down role. And so – Cordell, we're just gonna have you just kind of be, you know, you know, wide receiver now, and then you know, with Drake London in there and Brian Edwards, in, you know, maybe he's just like goes back to just being what he's been in the past, which is almost like a, a unusable, you know, uh, you know, player uh, uh, on like your fantasy utility team. back. But, I, I will say this. I will say this. Playing devil's advocate, mm -hmm. they did get Pettis in a pretty okay, a pretty solid contract mm -hmm. with a good, a good amount of guaranteed money, a mm -hmm. two-year deal, I mm -hmm. believe. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely, they they show with their money that they do value Patterson. So so definitely, I'm not gonna knock Kim. I mean, I see the avenue to a high end type outcome. And if you're telling me he's being drafted as a depth piece right now, there's obviously value in that. Any yeah. player you put on your your bench to, for for week one mm -hmm. is value if they give you any kind of production because you weren't depending on that guy in the first place. I really think this is what I think is gonna happen. Okay, and this kind of goes to like our whole mantra. Uh, as far as kind of what we do in terms of just, you know, stay, you know, stay ready. I really think we're going to start seeing a bunch of positive drum beats come out of camp. He's about Patterson? About Patterson. It's going to start off with we're holding him out of mandatory minicat because we want to keep him fresh. Then we're going to get to, you know, then we're going to get to training camp. And, you know, it's gonna, basically he's going to be the first person in line. I know you like looking at who's the first in right, line. But, you know, but I don't think anybody's arguing. Let me, let, let me okay. finish up. You know, this is going to be, the, you know, he's the first one, you know, in running back drills. Then it's going to be a pe press conference and they're going to be asking. And people, coaches are going to be, you know, you know, someone may ask, okay, how about this rookie Algier? Or how about the so-and-so? And they're going to say, well, Cordell Patterson is still our lead back. We still value him very highly. And you're okay. going to hear coaches saying that. And then it's, and then it's just going to be this positive drum beat. Uh, and let the people are going to realize this. that, oh, wait. He has the same role as he did last year. Let me year. ask you this. And even if he's not as productive, if he has the same role last year that he did last year, him being dra drafted in the ninth round as a running back eligible let, let player me, let me ask you is this. criminal. Let me ask you this. Where Patterson is being drafted right now, do you think people are drafting him there because they 
they don't think he's going to have the same role as he did last year? Absolutely. 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 Because there's no way you can think he has the same role and for him to be drafted there. To me, he needs to be drafted in the seventh. So you see it as a fluke. So 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 he's he's a fluke. There's no difference between him and Elijah Mitchell. People look at the Falcons situation as... There's no See, I, I guess it's kind of hard for me to truly believe that because if they truly feel like he's not going to have the same role, then they will be drafting a different Falcons guy well, over Well, you know, him. there's some people who do. This is what happens. I'm talking about the consensus. This is, this is what I'm talking about, yeah. And I think it's the consensus. This is what happens. You have the consensus that drafts based off of, like, you know, a certain level of confidence. Okay. And Patterson is one of those guys that they have very low confidence in. Okay. If you had the same level of, that Elijah Mitchell was going to produce like he did last year, that confidence level, he would be going in the third and fourth round. But people don't have that confidence level. To me, there's no reason that Cordero Patterson should be drafted, you know, that far after Elijah Mitchell. Because Elijah Mitchell's not going to catch passes. He didn't catch passes last year, and Dabster's not going to catch passes this year. And then he may lose his second. So if, you don't have, if we don't have that same level of confidence in an Elijah Mitchell, why is he going in the fifth, sixth round, and then Cordell Patterson is going in the eighth and ninth round? I'm not really high on Mitchell this year. Yeah, but so. where does he go in drafts? I mean, I know. I, got, I mean, I get it. You know? ne- neither of those guys I'm drafting right now. So yeah. you know, Most people aren't. Most people aren't. Yeah. But I, that's, the thing, and that's the thing I like about Cordell Patterson is like, those are, that's, that's, that's the point in the draft where you take stabs. And again, the real question, though, and this is like with any player, you know, and you should always challenge whenever someone says, okay, I'm high on a certain player or draft a certain player, certain players of value. This is who are you taking him over? That is the real question. Mm-hmm. Because I'm not taking him over Russell Gage, okay? But Russell Gage, I think it goes a little bit higher. So the question is, who am I taking him over at that stage? And so I don't, you know, I don't have a draft list in front of me, but that's the real question. But I think there's a lot of guys think, that I will take him over. I think if you build your team properly leading up to where he starts to come up about on the draft board. Okay, like I'll give you well, that's, a few. I mean, that's based on roster construction. This? What if you right, go zero that's what I'm RB? Saying. That's you, what I'm you saying. Hit, roster you hit construction. End, you hit wide receivers, but I feel like I, he can I, help I think, out anything. I think if you go zero RB, well, I, I don't think Patterson is the right type of running back to have. For your zero RB build. All right, all right. Let's just do just two. Okay. Just two. All right. Are you taking Cordell Patterson or Ronald Jones? Interesting. I mean, okay, so the way I would think about this situation, Mm -hmm. for me personally, and I might be wrong, but again, I'm just making my type of educated guess at the moment. I see Ronald Jones as the Chiefs running back two. Okay. Let's just start there. So he's the backup running back, while the way I view Patterson is he could potentially be the running back one, mm-hmm. or he could potentially be the running back two. Right. So the edge right there, I'll obviously give to Patterson, because I feel like he has the potential of being the running back one. Mm-hmm. The second thing, uh, receiving work. It's one of the main things I look at with running backs. We know Ronald Jones is not that great of a receiving back. Like, we know mm-hmm. that. We, we, we have seen uh, type of uh, samples of Ronald Jones struggling in the passing game. Mm-hmm. It's almost like he's kind of like... He's non-existent there. While we've seen Patterson, I mean, Patterson was a wide receiver. So we know he has the receiving chops. He did it last year to some extent. So when comparing those two circumstances, Patterson, once again, has the edge. Mm -hmm. Um, The edge Ronald Jones is going to have, he's on the better team. When you're on the better team, you're likely going to get a lot more opportunities to score. Like Especially I, on the goal line. Right. I, if you were to ask me who was going to have more red zone opportunities between the mm-hmm. Chiefs and the Falcons, I'm going to go with the Chiefs literally 100% of the time. That's, yeah. one, that's one of the time where but I'm I don't know it. if the Rojo is the guy, though. Right. I'm not, I'm not saying yeah. he's the guy. I'm just saying as, as far as choosing those two options, I would say Rojo. Uh, so, again, this now goes back to our build. If I was building a team where I'm hoping to have – Again, I don't want this, mm-hmm. but if I needed somebody I wanted to start as a, in the running back slot, mm-hmm. like I need you to start, I'm depending on you, out of those two, I would probably go Patterson because I know he has the, the potential to be the, the running back one. one and he has yeah. the, the receiving potential. Mm-hmm. For me, yeah, for now, me. Now, if I was looking for a depth piece between those two, I would actually go Ronald Jones. Why? Because, yeah, probably week one, Ronald Jones is not going to be much for me. Mm-hmm. But what if CH gets hurt? Mm-hmm. You know, or what if McKinnon gets hurt, and they're forced to have Ronald Jones as their number one r- running back? If you told me Ronald Jones was the Chiefs' number one running back, if I knew that right now, I'm gonna draft Ronald Jones over Patterson every single time. Hmm. You know, because again, I I I'd want to attach myself to the better offense. Yeah, you know, that's just how I view it. So that's why if it was a depth piece, 
a guy that I know I'm not going to depend on, but has a potential to get in this this great role. I kind of want that type of player on my yeah. team. Yeah, I completely you know? I completely disagree. Uh, so one thing I think Cordell Patterson is actually like the perfect zero RB because if we're worried about him whether or not he can hold up or him no, 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 fading I, off. No, no, no. I, what, like but what me, I, that's what I'm saying. For a zero RB, RB, it would be Patterson for me. Yeah. For a zero RB, I'm not going to take Ronald Jones. Okay. I don't want to okay. depend okay. on Ronald Jones okay. as my number one yeah. running back week one. But, like I, there's no way yeah. in hell. And I it, mean, yeah, and, and again, I think it depends on how you view Ronald Jones because I feel like if Ceh goes down, I feel like it's not just Ronald Jones. I feel like Gore is there. Yeah. I feel like I feel like they may just use Jared McKinnon a lot more, and I feel like yeah, Ronald. I mean, and what? they use and, and and to me, the Chiefs are not a guy, are not a team that like brings in this like you know this like uh, bulldozer type running back around the goal line. Right. To me, right. they're a team that like uses a guy who can I mean, like catch, but, but you know, the, who, who can catch but, out but of the But of course, like I'm not, I'm not line. saying he's going to be the only guy. There's literally no team yeah. that has an only guy situation. Every team yeah. shares the rock. But what I am going to say is if CEH is out of the picture, the pie is divvied out through less people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's important to me. Yeah, but I don't know the parts of the pie for Ronald Jones. I guess, you know, maybe I'm a Ronald Jones hater from that respect. I still feel like in that situation, Cordell Patterson is the one who would have to me higher upside. Yeah, and, and you know, I'm not, I'm not yeah. going, I'm not going to knock that. But for me, I would rather attach myself, like I just mentioned, to the higher octane offense, in my opinion, and the team that's going to be more red zone opportunities. And I mean, you can say it however you want. If I know, if I was to say who's going to get more catches, who's going to get more touchdowns, I'm going to go with the guy that I think is going to get more touchdowns. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's Ronald Jones. You you lost? All right, all right, all right. You Here's lost? your second one. You hmm? lost? No, no, 28 seven. No. Okay. No. Hey, hey, I'm for, back. For those for those of you who are not watching, Chris is literally playing Madden right <laughs> no, now. I'm back. Trying out something new. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how. <laughs> I'm back. Uh, but second second person, Melvin Gordon or Cordell? Oh, that's not even close to me. That's Cordell. It's not close to me. For me, oh, it's not no. close. <laughs> oh no! Because, because you're, bank, one you, thing, you're, you're baking on it. You're baking banking on an injury for of, of you know to happen to Javante Williams. I'm not even banking no, on no, that. No, I'm no. not banking on that at all. I'm looking if at the, splitting the circumstances. We right saw now. Them, we saw them split carries last year. Yeah, and Melvin yeah. Gordon have value last year. Yeah. He okay. didn't have Cordell Patterson value. He didn't have value that right. Like, but again, but again, I, I'm starting off with the the the. The assumption that Mel, uh, Cordell Patterson is not going to be the, ha have the same role as he did last year. That's yeah. where I'm starting off at. So, but when I look at Melvin Gordon, I literally think there's a good chance it's the exact same circumstances as well last year. Okay. Like exact, you know. Okay. So when I look at those two, it's almost like I'm more confident in how the Gordon situation is going to play out than the Patterson. Oh, but again, I'm not, yeah, I'm not there then. I, I like mean, I, I think everybody jumping on the Javante Williams train. I don't see is it an assumption. Well, mm -hmm. well, I mean, it's, it's not a bad Look, assumption. But the thing, the thing like is, it. but it's like, an assumption. Can we how much does it happen yet? How much did they play Melvin Gordon? And it's a new coaching staff. It's a brand Melvin new Gordon coaching staff. Melvin still has the same. Or did he get re-signed? Yeah, he got re-signed. Remember, he's a free he's agent. I, I don't he's remember agent. how much he got signed. Yeah, he's a free agent. I don't remember. But, but again, I mean, the contract is, like, they're not going to say, Melvin Gordon, we use you this year. This way, and then oh, we signed you to a less contract, so we're now we're going to use you totally different. But it's a different, yeah. it's a completely different coaching staff. It's a completely different. I mean, yeah, staff. I, you know what? I agree on that. So we don't really know. We don't so, really know. So from but, your standpoint, who's more talented between Melvin Gordon and Cordell yeah. Patterson? No, no, between Melvin Gordon and Javante Williams. Oh, Javante. Okay, so but but again, I mean, we've talked about y'all know. But I you say just this said mantra, you draft talent say, over. But I say this mantra situation. all the time. I say, um, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying I'm drafting Gordon over Javante. First off. Of course, I'm going to draft Javante over Melvin Gordon. But if you draft, if at, ta but if it's ta if it's based on talent, talent, I'm going to draft Javante over Melvin Gordon. Yeah. Okay. Javante is going in the second round. Melvin yeah. Gordon is going to like the I, seven. I understand it, but we're basically if you're saying if you draft talent over situations, so I'm going to draft Javante over. I'm going to draft Javante over. So then why would we Gordon? assume that Javante is getting getting to work? No, by you your just asked, by your logic, you just asked if I'm drafting talent over a situation. I am drafting Javante over Gordon. 10 out of 10 times. That's not, it's not the question. It's not, it's not those two, but if you have Javante being more talented, yeah. so why would you draft the RB2 in that offense? Because I'm getting him where I'm getting him. You're, 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 you're having two different discussions. I'm talking about we, him versus Cordell Patterson. To, who I think is more talented between Gordon and Patterson, no. is, I think it's Gordon. But one's an, one's an RB1. One's I, but an that's RB2. the thing. I've been saying this. I'm not sure Patterson is going to truly be the RB1 for but that team. But he has team a higher chance the of being the RB1 than Melvin Gordon has. He, he might. What do you he, mean? He, you, I mean, you he really? might. 
He he legit, legitimately might. Okay. He legitimately okay. like Gordon okay. has literally said, "I'm not succeeding the running back one role." Okay. Like Gordon doesn't think he's the back of running back. I mean, Gordon thinks he's I mean, still he can fighting say that. for the job. He can say that. I mean, yeah, he can say it. <laughs> what I'm saying is, Gordon himself is not saying I'm the backup, right. which means he's still fighting for that job. So Patterson and Gordon literally are saying. There's a chance we could be running back one. Now, Patterson might have the higher chance, mm -hmm. but I'm not just going to say, Gordon, you have no chance at all. We're not, Gordon, we're, not, we're not saying no chance. I think there's no chance, but we're not saying no chance. We're saying which one has a higher. So if you think Cordell Patterson has a higher, then why, why is there Because a that's potential. But, but somebody can have a high ceiling and a low floor. Like they have a wide range. I, I'm not looking at what their range is. I'm looking at literally just where I see their roles right now. If I was to make a bet, I would see Gordon as being a higher chance of having a better outcome or value than I do Patterson at the moment. But again, that that is to take into account I'm not very high on Patterson. Okay. I feel like role, his role is going to diminish. Okay, what about let's, let's bring in Kareem Hunt into the situation? I would take Hunt over everybody we just said. Including yeah. Devin Singletary? <sighs> See, those two are like right in his current situation too because that's it, Those two are like pick. those two are pick. like right in the, uh, Who's more talented? Hunt. Easily, right? But so Hunt is also the back. He's also the, the second string running back. Remember, yeah. I look at both things. I look at talent and I look at their depth chart. So you look at Hunt is the backup chart. running back, but Hunt is also more talented. So that's why on one day I might say Hunt, the other day I might say Singletary. And if you look at the drafts, they're literally going in the same so spot. You're trying to like, you know, yeah. wiggle his way out of. <laughs> I mean, you're not you're not going to wiggle it because I'm going to keep the same the same the same stance. Okay. You know, okay. I'm looking at both those situations, well, and again, and then and then it also looks at the way my team is built. Mm -hmm. If I have a team where I need somebody to be like in my running back one or running back two slot, I'll probably say Singletary. If I'm looking at my flex slot, I'll probably go Hunt. But honestly, it really is just how I feel that day. And I, I draft. But why is that though? Because I mean, like Hunt has produced is because I, an I don't, don't want to I don't want to depend on a run a back or running back to be my starting running back in fantasy. I don't want to depend on that. Yeah. But, but again. We draft a fair amount of teams where we're going to diversify anyway. I'm not going to draft Singletary 100% of the time if I have the option. I'm going to probably say I might lean 60% Singletary and 40% Hunt, but I'm still going to diversify. Because like I said, there's a chance I'm wrong. There's mm -hmm. a chance we're all wrong. I'm not going to – I'm not so cocky where I'm like I can predict the future. Nobody can predict the future. No. But you still have to predict. Right. But that's what I'm saying. I'm going to draft one. One day and probably draft the other during the draft, but I'm not going to draft one 100 percent of the time because I feel like their values are so close that if I'm drafting a fair amount, I need to get I need you to get exposure pick one. to both. You got to pick one right now. It's main event. You got one team. <laughs> Who are you picking? Am I am I picking for my running back two slot or my flex slot? Who are you picking? No, but that's important. Am I picking for my running back two Man, slot who or are my you flex picking? spot? In a vacuum, who are you picking? For my running back two slot, I'm picking Singletary. For my flex, I'm picking Man, Hunt. You gotta get, you gotta go. Okay. No, but that, but that's important. <laughs> what do we always? Well, what do I always say? Team build is the most important thing in all of fantasy. You have to build your team a certain way. If yeah. I drafted a running back round one, two, three, and four, which means I got four running backs, which means all my starter slots are filled. When I get to round six or whatever round these guys are taking, I'm not drafting either of them. Yeah. Right? I'm not, because I don't need them. Yeah. That's a, a horrible bill. If I'm drafting zero wide, uh, running back where I have nothing but wide receivers, and then I get to a point where I'm now, okay, I'm ready to take my first running back, and I got Singletary sitting here and Hunt, I might take Singletary because I know he's their lead back. Well, okay. let's stay on running backs for a second. Let's talk about problematic handcuffs because I'm starting to see. Um, you know, Deontay Foreman go ahead of Chuba. And to me, it doesn't make sense. Chuba has been in the system. He knows the system. What do you mean, been in the system? He, he was a rookie, well, like, bro. Well, like, he was a rookie, but like he was in that he system. He was a rookie that got his job taken by Amir Abdullah. Don't Man. forget. But still, he knows that system. Yeah. Why take but, it? But, number but one, the system number is one, different, though. Yeah, number one, it's not the same system. Brady got Fair fired. Enough. They brought Fair in enough. McAdoo. Yeah. And, and According to Abby. Oh, Abby yeah. By the way, just to put nah, it out there, hey, Abby, hey, hey, hey. Abby been creating this kind of cheat <laughs> sheet <laughs> that he doesn't want to share with the people. Yeah. And he's been I'm specifically looking at the mode. Panthers. But uh, I just want to put that out there. We're trying to get him to put it out there. He's being stingy. Why would I share something with somebody He's being stingy, man. Abby's stingy. Anyway. But anyway. So, yeah. So, um... So what are, are you saying? Wait, are you saying you think Chuba? There's a chance Chuba could be the true backup over Foreman. Yes, because again, he was a rookie. He's now been with that franchise. They know what they have in him. Okay. I mean, I'm not, not gonna, gonna. I'm not gonna. I don't knock think the it. system is gonna I'm change. Not, I'm not much. gonna knock it out. The only reason why 
Well, first of all, consensus definitely has Foreman as being the lead. Back, right. I mean, the, sorry, the backup to C Mac. But I'm not going to speak on consensus wise. I'm just going to speak on circumstance. Circumstance wise, Foreman was the the guy that they signed this offseason, right? Mm -hmm. He didn't get a big contract. One year, two million, I believe, or or something small. So mm -hmm. nothing too crazy. Mm -hmm. Like nine hundred something guaranteed. So nothing they can't get out of. Yeah, but nine hundred guaranteed. Looking at what occurred with Hubbard last year, I think it was a very disappointing disappointing situation where Hubbard started off as the immediate backup to C Mac, but after a few games, Abdullah started to take a fair amount of carries. Uh, and it wasn't even the carries. It was more so like he was getting all the third down work. I mean, he was just getting work, work. And the two-minute work because they did not trust Hubbard. You know, right. Not, uh, and, and I think we heard that. I, yeah. I think we heard they, they were having trouble uh, yeah. um, trusting Hubbard. So if you look at that, Amir Abdullah went to the Raiders. So he's mm -hmm. gone now. He's in Vegas. But then they signed Foreman. And we saw Foreman last year who was actually the lead back for the Titans when Henry went down. Well, not exactly when he went down, but at some point, yeah. Foreman was getting carries like he was the lead back. Yeah. And for them to bring him in, you would think he is now the true backup for yeah, the I Panthers. I, I will say, I, I, I think it's important to kind of bring up, and I think it's important to bring up for all handcuff situations. Uh, because there are certain handcuff situations that historically, when the lead back has gotten hurt, that, that handcuff has gotten basically all the work, if not more work, because mm -hmm. the back behind them, they just did, absolutely didn't even trust. But like Madison. Yeah, and yeah. I think that changes from year to year, and I think we do have to be careful about just assuming it. So in this situation, I think you know people are starting to catch on that, yes, I agree. It's likely the, Deontay Foreman is going to get definitely the early down work. Whether or not he's a three down or see, they split it, like that we don't see, know. But, see, so that but, we don't but know. But here's the only reason why I think he is a three down back, because <coughs> Chubba has never been known as being a receiving running back, even from college. But, so, so if Chubba's not even a high – is not even known as being a receiver, then it's like, okay, really, where's your role? You're not going to be the early down back. You're not going to overtake Foreman as the early down back. You're not going to be the receiving back because, again, that's what Abdullah was doing last year. So, really, where do you truly fit in, you know? No, I agree, but that but that does not prevent them from like bringing somebody else oh, in. Oh, yeah, you know? I mean, that, that, and that's a whole issue. I I so hundred percent agree with yeah, that. So so this is where I think it's important to like really like kind of have a good understanding of like what a player is. And to me, Deontay Foreman is great in between the tackles. Mm -hmm. Can he catch a couple passes? Yes, but I don't think he's somebody that's going to be right, like right. reliant. So when you value him, I don't think you can value him in the same way that you value some other hand, you know, ru you know, running back handcuffs like. There are certain running backs, like, if they get injured, like, I can see, like, their handcuffs, like, taking over a significant the, the amount only, of role. The only and I think those are very, very few. And I think some of, the, some of those situations, you, like, Madison, for instance, mm -hmm. we don't know that, like, there's some rumblings, like, uh, you know, give credit to, uh, I forget who uh, Ian Hart's had on. It was a Vikings beat writer. Uh, can't, re can't recall his name. But the guy that we were on, Kenny, uh, what's his like? What's his uh, Kenny Nwangwe. Yeah, Kenny Nwangwe. Mm -hmm. The guy that we were on last year, like, there's some rumblings that there may be some split there. And in, I don't in, know. The guy, but we the don't. Guy, but we don't know. The guy, yeah. the Vikings. I think the guy that in the running back room that you got to look out for is actually Ty Chandler. And, and really, it's mm -hmm. simple as the fact that new coach regime, the first mm -hmm. running back they drafted. That's really yeah, a simple. Yeah. Because. Cook and Madison's contracts are coming up very soon. Yeah. And this is, I guess, this is more so towards Dynasty. We yeah. haven't talked Dynasty at all. But when you're looking at Dynasty, look at the Cook and Madison. Their contract is coming up really soon. At some point, they're going to have to make a decision. This new regime yeah. drafted this running back from North Carolina, but guess Ty what? Chandler. That's, 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 that's extremely important for redraft, too, because Madison is going extremely high. Yeah. Really? Yeah. He's going yeah. extremely high. Yeah. And yes, would I love to like kind of have that handcuff? Yes, but I don't want it that high. If right. I gotta spend a ninth round, tenth round pick, like I mean, that's not that's not really something I want to do. I, given I where feel, those guys I feel are going on that, yeah. but I'm I subscribe, and this might be something like, I'm in the, the major minority with, but I really feel like once you get your starting positions locked in, mm -hmm. I don't care what round you draft for your bench type players. Like so, what I'm really saying is, if you have every other position full, filled in your starting lineup. I don't mind you taking Madison high at all because he's just a guy on the bench. Because uh, I see, I disagree because there are guys I mean, yeah, that you yeah, can like use. I said, like I, if, I, if Madison going in the ninth round and then like Kadarius Tony goes like right after him or like yeah, right I mean, I, like I mean, I, I'm I'm not saying I'm right. I, like I said, I'm more in the minority in it because, but I, this, I, I feel like bench guys, the, their value is irrelevant at that. But point. you're taking you're taking you know Madison with the idea that okay. 
I can only use him if Cook goes down, right? Yeah. And we can't predict injuries, right? Right, right. 100%. So, why, so if you can take, like, to me, like, understanding which handcuffs can, like, really come in and provide a three-down role. Yeah. I need to be able to tear those and need to be able to kind of rank those. Like, someone mm. like a Khalil Herbert with, like, the Bears. Yeah. That's, like, a guy that, like, is a... To me, a great value when it comes right, to handcuffs right. because he could he could handle all three. I, down. I guess I guess what I'm saying yeah. is the way I look at it is once you get into the, and again this is let's let's say this is a Mendoza line this the once you you Mendoza starters line. feel once, line. because because you because because, line? because because when I when I draft my <laughs> mind literally he's switches deep, Mendoza he's, line <laughs> he's getting deep <laughs> when I when I draft my mind literally switches once I have my starters filled in at that point when I'm drafting my depth pieces. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can rank who's a better handcuff, and you know I can literally have it listed out. But that's really not as important as where ADP is actually. Waller is killing. You know, so so I guess what I'm saying is, if Madison is being taken in the tenth round, and I know that's where he's being taken, like I'm not gonna say he's not. That's too high of a value. I'm gonna just skip on him. I'm gonna just take him there because these other guys. Later, wherever their ADP is, I'm gonna just take them at their ADP too. Because at that point, again, depth piece, it don't matter. Because once the season, once week one comes, they're just guys on your bench anyways. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. I, I disagree though. I disagree because I think what everyone is trying to do with each round is find a guy that can outproduce his ADP. Yeah, you're trying to do that as much as possible. I, I, I think, I, like, yeah, you could just like draft randomly and get lucky, or draft randomly but, but, and the but, guy but, gets but randomly that's not, hurt. But that's not truly but random. Tr- that's not true. Again, I'm saying if if I know Madison's ADP is here. And I have a uh, opportunity to take them here, and I, again, I have everything else filled. I'm gonna take them. But, but again, I, I think the reason I'm saying this is because, and it depends on the bill too. Like it depends on the bill. Like, the the reason I'm saying this is because once you get into the handcuff range, for me, all handcuffs have the same exact value because, well, not all, S- most have the same exact value because they're not gonna matter until. The starter gets hurt. But that's what I'm getting at is if you're drafting a handcuff because you're thinking that, okay, he can come in and save me if the, but you know, this, and this is a lot for, this goes, I mean, this goes for any team, but a lot for specifically for the zero RB team, RB teams where you're like really wanting to hope that you can like find that diamond in a rough yeah. handcuff or whatever. And you're hoping that somebody gets injured. Don't you want that guy who's taking over to have like the best opportunity of, I of maximizing the I, point? But I, so if, if if I'm going to draft a handcuff, I want to draft the best handcuff. I agree. I agree what you're saying. But my only pushback will be is, yeah, we could say we're going to draft the best handcuff. But honestly, it's literally not going to matter whatsoever if the starter for that handcuff doesn't get hurt. And we can't predict injuries. Like we could say, of course the, you can't predict injuries. Yeah. But no, like you no, can do no, that. No, you can say that with every team. We could say. Player X is the best handcuff in the whole league, right? Like, we can say this guy right here, out of every backup, he is the number one ranked backup. But if his starter is healthy for the full season, then that backup didn't benefit it at all compared to, say, the number 10 ranked backup, and his starter actually does well, get of hurt. Of course, of course, but still, in a vacuum, you still, like, or in, a draft, in, a, in, in, in a draft, stop it. In a, in, a, <laughs> in a draft, you still want to like, if you're going to be drafting a handcuff, you still want to draft the best handcuff that's available. That, but that, that's the point I'm trying to make. I feel like once you got your starters, your starters solidified, all the handcuffs are on even value to me. Because again- That doesn't make sense to me. I'm, but I'm explaining to you why. But you, uh, you're, you're, saying, what I'm you're saying, saying because we can't predict. But you still gotta, you still got you still gotta draft with some idea of like. No, okay, but this the guy reason why, but the reason I'm saying they're all the same values because if the starter, if the guy that's playing above them doesn't get hurt, they're not usable anyways. All these guys are really gonna truly be usable once the starter gets hurt. So then the ADP the, matters. Then so then for you no, the but, ADP matters but, but, even but more. But so then why saying, would you waste the why would you waste a tenth round pick on Madison if the, if the handcuffs don't matter? Why waste a tenth round pick on Madison? And then just like, why wouldn't you just wait until round 15, because, 16, because, 17 because again, and get the handcuffs Because there? I know if Madison is being, if his ADP is in the 10th, and that's where you, he's being taken, then I'm going to just take him. But if they're all the same, why waste a 10th round pick when you can get because, an actual because starter? Because I don't see him as being... Wait, where you okay, can get a starter. Okay, wait, wait. Now, if you're saying, what do you mean a starter? You can get a guy that can start. Just because like you who? got... Like who? Because, like who? Like who? Like a tight end, if you waited, if you waited on tight end, like a but, but, like a quarterback, they, if you waited on quarterback, but those like you, a, a but, number okay, of different those, players, those are a those wide are, receiver. That those you, are positions that it depends on how you value that position. I or just, a wide receiver, I value, a wide receiver. That you I, I value running backs over all those positions you just said. 
I, I, because I feel like you can get a wide receiver at the end of the draft that can that can produce. You know, I, I feel like wide receiver because teams play three, four wide receiver sets. You, you can get any of these wide receivers later. Maybe, and, but you're more likely to hit on a wide receiver earlier on. I mean, yeah, when we're talking about the wide receiver ones and wide receiver twos, twos or, but I'm talking we're talking now in the back end of the draft. All I'm saying is those we're backups. About the tenth round. That's not the back end. What I'm saying is those backups, all of them have the same exact value to me because all of them are only going to be able to be utilized once the starter goes down. If the starter plays the full season, like say for Madison, if Cook never gets hurt, then Madison has no value anyway. But we know, but we, we don't have that information going in. Right. So right but, now but, you have and, to make and, this and best decision. And that's why I say, I, for me, I don't, it, I don't mind drafting Madison where he's going because, again... But if that, they're all equal... Why would you waste a 10th round pick? Because I don't see it as a waste. You're saying it's a waste because you, you would rather take some random tight end and some random Ken, quarterback. It's not, be a random tight end. it's not a random tight end or a random wide receiver. What if, all the, what if all of your top quarterbacks go off the board and Lance is there for you? If you want Lance, then take Lance. Yeah, but what if I already have my quarterback? Remember I said, okay. I'm talking if you have all your starters filled already. But you need more than just starters. Your starters have buys. Your starters may get hurt. But, 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 but what I'm referring to in this instance is if all your starters are filled, like you have every position filled already, and now you're just talking about your backups. For me, all the backups have the same value because it doesn't matter. I'm not going to be able to play them until the starter gets hurt, with the exception of Tony Pollard. But but they can't. <laughs> all, <laughs> but they can't all be ranked the same. If you I didn't choose. say no, no. I didn't say they're ranked the same. I didn't all say right. they're ranked the same. Like I said, you can. Have, okay, look at it like this: the number one ranked backup. Tony okay? Pollard. Let's say it's Pollard. Mm -hmm. Let's just say it's Pollard, right? right. The number one ranked backup. He's the number I mean, like, no. Like, okay. That's the number one ranked backup is Pollard, right? So you admit right? that he's a backup. Yes. We got so it yes. on tape. Okay. He's yes, a backup. That's what Carly said. Yes. The number one, one, say, yes. the number one ranked <laughs> yes. backup, Pollard, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Who? I don't even know who the backup running back is for the Colts right now, right? I don't, Nahe, let's Nahe. say Naheem. I don't want to say it's Hines because I don't know if he get. But say it is him. He'll get enough work to know he is a backup. Say it's Hines, right? Yeah. If Jonathan Taylor tore his ACL today, Mm -hmm. I would are, value Hines over Pollard. These are these are hypothetical. Yeah. You of course, don't know this no, information. What, what, I'm, what I'm saying only be listen, but, but based listen on the information saying, you Listen, what I'm now. saying. The backups, no matter how you rank the backups, their value is not going to be relevant. But unless you're, con you're contraindicating. You're, you're, you're being contraindicated. What's, what's the word? Contradicting. Contradicting. You're contradicting, you're contradicting yourself. You're contradicting yourself. But I'm not, though. You're contradicting I'm yourself. I'm not. You are because you're basically saying they're all the same, but then I'm still okay with taking Pollard in the ninth round. I'm still because, okay with taking again, Madison in the tenth Because, again, round. But, when I can but get I told a bunch you, of handcuffs But I told you the reason why I'll take him there. I'll take You know who the, goes in the ninth round? I, Russell Gage. I told you the reason why. So Gage, they're all the same. Why would you take Pollard? I'm taking Gage in the eighth. But I told you the reason. I would take Madison. Erase that. <laughs> I, I, I told you I would take I would take Madison Beat there. That out. I would take Madison there if that's where his ADP says he is. If his but ADP all the same, why take him there? Because I just said it. <laughs> if his ADP says he's a tenth round pick, so you draft based off ADP. When it gets to that point, when I'm talking about my backups, yes, okay. because again, they're all valued the same way. Because I know I'm not going to be able to get him in the twelfth, and that's really and again. All these values, all these backups to me are literally the same exact value because they're all going to just sit on my bench until something happens where the, the starter gets hurt. Okay. If their starter gets hurt, then their value shoots up. You know, so I don't care if you're the number one ranked backup or the number 15 ranked backup. Once you have that opportunity, because running back is all about opportunity. Once you have that opportunity to get that role as being the main back, I would, your I would, value shoots up immensely. I would, I would almost guarantee that. 10th round draft capital versus 16th round draft capital yields more productive players, more league winning players year in and year out. I mean, I mean, like I would, I would just venture to say that. So to me, there is like, there is, I mean, like, but like, that's I, a can't, cost. I can't argue with what you just venture in and say. Like, I mean, how, we can't even prove that. Like, that's just man, a somebody, thing. Somebody, like, somebody, that's somebody look that up. Those are literally just up. words you just said. Like, how am I going to argue words you just said? Give me a paper, look that up. So, <laughs> but, but again, <laughs> but yeah, no but, 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 one or two listeners out there. But here's what I'm also saying. I'm not even saying, I'm not even pushing back on the fact that somebody in a 16 round can be more valuable than somebody in a 10. All I'm really saying is, all of them to me, are going to be the same thing until their starter goes down. Once their starter goes down, because even like yeah, but if let's say, look at, say all their starters go down, because based off of history, it's a it's a hundred percent that that base, you're gonna, you're going to have only a handful of running backs, if even that, that play all sixteen. So games. you're saying so all of them will eventually go down. If okay, so every so if every starter goes down, 
You have them ranked a certain way. Yeah, I didn't say I don't have them okay, ranked. I said I saying. value them the same. I have them, I have, of course, I have a I, rank. You don't value What's them the same. You don't value them the same. You're basing your value off of ADP. And ADP's value is based no, off of who no. is who. Wait, slow down, slow down. You are valued. When I draft, I draft off ADP. When, I, when I'm talking about strictly value, as far as the person's value, We're once the about, draft is over, uh, ADP don't matter. I'm talking about draft. So okay, you're spending a 10th round draft capital, you're valuing that based off of ADP. If Madison's ADP is in the 10th, then I'm going to draft him in the 10th. But if guess I, what that's based off of? That's based off of people. That's based off the consensus thinking that, that I didn't, he's, I, he's, I, a, he's a higher tier. But I know income. what it's based I'm not arguing what it's based off of. Like, I'm not debating any of that. All I'm saying is when it, I'm drafting and I have all my starters feel and I get to the point where I'm in the, if Madison's ADP is in the 10th and I'm in the 10th round and I'm like saying I want to get a backup running back here. Then I'm, if I know Madison is taken here, I'm gonna just take him. So you're okay with taking Madison in the tenth, ninth round? I literally just been saying that. Yeah. Okay, so that is that is an acceptable point for you to take Madison ninth, tenth round. I'm taking again. I'm gonna reiterate it. If all my starters are filled, yeah. again, I don't. I'm not looking for a starter in position. If I'm just looking at my backups, I'm specifically if, talking if, about if Madison's Madison. ADP is in the ninth round. If I have every position yeah. filled and his ADP is in the ninth, you take it. And him. I have him ranked as my highest backup. I'm gonna take him. Okay. I'm going to take him. Why oh, not? You, you have him ranked as your highest backup. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's literally all we've been saying is that you, you rank your, your yeah, handcuffs. You rank no, but I didn't say I didn't rank. I just told you I could have a guy ranked number you one. You said that was my No, no, no. I, I, again, I told you. I have them ranked. Okay. But what I'm saying is their value is the same. I don't until, really get the difference between rank and value. They are, because they y'all because, y'all, because y'all not trying to understand. Look, look. No, put uh, like yo, this, we don't understand like what you're saying. Put it like this. Put it like this. Like... Again, we uh, we can have the talent discussion. All right, I know this player is very talented, like Pollard. Mm-hmm. I I think Pollard is extremely talented. Ever since he came into the league, I think he's extremely talented. But I also know Pollard right now is in the backup role. Mm-hmm. Right, as so I'm, I'm drafting him as such. Mm-hmm. If Pollard was a starter for me, Pollard would be of of one of the top two round picks mm-hmm. for me. Right. But again, I view Pollard, Pollard as a backup, right? If I Madison, if Mad, if Cook was hurt, like done, like right now, I'm gonna take Madison over Pollard right now. Yeah, Easily. of course. I mean, that's of the course. point I'm trying to make. These backups, I have Pollard rank higher as a backup, but value Madison wise, value matter. wise, I'm not gonna play. I'm just gonna shake my head and nod and pretend like I understand what you're saying. Mm. And it's not a knock. I'm not like no. I mean, I'm just again, saying I don't again, like. Again, it's one of those things y'all, where y'all, you think a certain y'all way. Y'all trying to mo- y'all are trying to put y'all really trying to see value and ADP as the same, and it's not the same for me. That might be the way y'all see it, but when I look at ADP, I'm looking at. There's a reason why we study the boards. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. For instance, you like Brandon Cook. You love Brandon Cook. I, what, I didn't say I, I love Brandon Cooks last year. I okay. like Brandon Cooks but this But you year. like Brandon Cook. You like yeah. Mooney, right? You like these I players. Like, I like okay. Mooney. I like a lot so, of these players. These players right here. He's you, putting all of your... Uh, <laughs> I, all, I mean, we've already, <laughs> we've already mentioned it. But you, have their, <laughs> you know where their ADPs are. You're going to be beeping this out. Yeah, right? No, you know, where, you know where their ADPs are right now. Like, right now, you can literally tell me this is where they're being drafted. Yeah, but they, I mean, they kind of fuck no, me up. But, but yeah. the, the point I'm trying to make is you're not going to draft these guys in the third round just because you're like, man... Hey, he's the highest. I mean, I don't value them there though. But but I'm saying, what, what, okay, what if first two rounds nothing but wide receivers are taken, mm-hmm. right? All mm-hmm. wide receivers. Yeah. So at this point, Brandon Cooks is the highest ranked wide receiver you have in the third round. Yeah. Are you going to draft him there? No, because then I'm gonna just eat up all the. Uh, and that's yeah, the point I'm trying to make. Yeah, yeah. You valuing Brandon Cooks doesn't mean that's you're drafting him high or at a certain place. All Dang, I'm saying I should is, answer that differently. I'm to <laughs> <laughs> All I'm saying is we know we know ADP. Yeah, yeah. We have our ADP. Like we know how to navigate the draft boards now. Yeah. But that doesn't mean I value this guy a certain way. I just like, know that I'm going to pick him get... where I feel like I know where I can yeah, get him. Get him. Yeah. I get what you're saying. I guess I get that's what you're all saying. I'm saying. No, no, I get what you're saying. Basically, you're just saying you're trying to be greedy. You're like. I like all the time. Yeah, he he's he's a backup runner back. It's the tenth round. There may be these other startable pieces on the board, but you know what? I'm gonna be greedy because yeah. I know the upside with this piece, right? And I'll make it up. Like, like say for instance, yeah, yeah. I'm high on Rashad Penny. Yeah, I actually think Penny should be drafted a lot higher. Okay. I'm not gonna draft him higher. Yeah. I don't give a damn. I have Penny, <laughs> have Penny ranked very high, but yeah, I'm yeah. gonna get Penny where Penny's yeah, going. Matter yeah. of fact. I'm gonna try to see if I can push Penny around later <laughs> and try to get him yeah. there. And it has yeah. no bearing on how I value Penny. Y'all know I love Penny. Yeah. 
But like Abby almost kind of what he just said, I'm greedy. Yeah. I'm going to try to get as much value, squeeze yeah, yeah. every dime of value yeah. out of him. You know, and then when he's on my team, because remember, once the draft is over, ADPs don't matter. You're right. not looking at your team like, I draft this guy in this round, this round. That's you're true. just looking at your team like, team, yeah. I got these guys. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. You know, so I guess that's really all I'm trying to say. Okay. Yeah, no, I got you. I got you. But hey, guys, we are two hours in. Yes, go. We're two hours in? We're two out, more than two hours in. Two hours and 13 minutes. We didn't minutes get that. We didn't hey, get so we have to show topics. Yeah, yeah, Real yeah. quick. Oh, um, for Dynasty, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, first, first, first. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I just want to say this thing real quick because I, I feel like I let my Dynasty people down last week by mm -hmm. not mentioning this because mm -hmm. I was talking about undrafted free agents. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I feel like well, I missed on out on, I, I missed out on mentioning how these guys are getting paid. I think that's probably one of the biggest factors when you're looking at undrafted free agents. Yeah. The guys that teams are giving the most money to, I feel like you should probably be valuing higher. Kennedy Brooks, I think, had the most amount of guaranteed money, mm -hmm. if not him, Abram Smith for the Saints and the Eagles. And uh, I think it's DeVry Prince or something like that got the most overall money from the Colts. If you're looking at undrafted free agents, I think it's probably important for you to look at the guys that are getting the most money. They have a higher chance of probably sticking on the team. And... I'm just saying because I mentioned Julius Chestnut, which who I yeah, know a lot of people are yeah. high on. But the problem with Julius Chestnut, he had no guarantee money in his contract, which means if they cut him right now, they owe him nothing. Mm -hmm. So it's easy for them to cut him. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, other guys, it's probably easy for them to be cut. Zaquandre uh, uh, White, easy for them to be cut. So I would just all I'm really saying is I would probably uh, value. People like Brooks mm -hmm. or Abram Smith. And this is why I brought him on the dynasty team because I don't know. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I, I, I value the last two people he just mentioned. <laughs> I have no clue. Yeah. Yeah, no, well, okay. So real guys. quick, and I won't take too long. <laughs> Kennedy Brooks, uh, we know, we the know. guy from Oklahoma, yeah. Yeah, we're uh, aware, yeah. one of the highest yards per rush last year. Who's they the paid next him guy? again. Huh? The Zaquandre White, mm -hmm. the Dolphins running back, former linebacker. The Dolphins they have a lot of draft picks, so mm -hmm. just okay. the fact that they picked him up, you know, you can kind of look at him and maybe like a, an extended draft pick for them. Okay. But again, they didn't give him any guaranteed money. A lot of people like Julius Chestnut for the Titans, they didn't give him any guaranteed money. So when I look at stuff like that, I, like yeah, we can love the talent. And one thing I feel like fantasy players do that's a problem is they 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 kind of uh, project their feelings of players onto what they truly believe the team is going to do. Mm -hmm. And in reality, man, we don't know what these teams are going to do. They're going to do what they want to do, and we just yeah. have to take it, you yeah. know? So if they cut White or Chestnut, I wouldn't be surprised because they owe them no money. Mm -hmm. And honestly, this is a business at the end of the day. And, you know, you know, money talks, right. you know? So that's right. kind of – I just want to kind of mention that. All right, all right, guys. Again. Abby, did you want to say something? No, we're good. But dude, okay. oh, let's give a shout out to Hubbard. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Hubbard, Hubbard man. man. Appreciate you, my yeah. boy. My boy. <laughs> yeah, real talk. He actually lives not too far from here. Uh, I don't know if people want to know where he lives. So I'm oh, not yeah, gonna put it out there. there. Right there. <laughs> but yeah, he's a lot closer than what we initially we gotta get him knew. On the pod. So we gotta get yeah, him on the pod. Yeah. For sure, for sure. All right, guys. That is the episode this week. Please like, rate, subscribe. That was a subscribe. long episode, huh? Very long episode. Yeah. We're out, guys. Yes, Watch you. I'm watching you just getting dominated in Madison. Gosh, yeah. In Madden here. Kyle Waller is killing I mean, me. I, I may need to add Waller back to the queue, oh, man. Waller like. is <laughs> killing me. Only problem I have with Waller is I just don't know what he's going to do with that contract. He still hasn't got an extension. Yeah. He's talking positive.